What's up, boys? Welcome to another episode of Bustin' with the Boys. I'm your host, Will Compton, the boy Taylor. Out for another intro. The boy, number one, threw a hell of an Easter party over the weekend, then immediately flew to Canada. So the boy is in Canada right now until he has to fly down to Colorado, where we have our next live show, which, of course, you guys can get tickets. What, what's the, if you guys type in Bustin' Live Events on Google, you'll be able to go right there. But we perform in Denver, Colorado this Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Do you know the location, the venue name? The venue name? Colorado? Oh, wait. I have the View House Ballpark. View House Ballpark. We'll be at View House Ballpark, 8 p.m. Denver, Colorado, Wednesday night. Um, I expect to see a lot of Husker fans there because I know we have a massive Husker chapter in Colorado. But before we get into everything, this episode is brought to you by the one, the only, the Chevy Silverado. You know we are truck guys through and through. The Chevy Silverado has been a partner with Unstoppable Grit and Determination since you were born. It's been our most valuable truck and MVT. And now the first ever all-electric Silverado joins the franchise. We got the chance to see this thing and experience it in person. It was sick. I'm talking, we were speeding our ass off. They, obviously, they had this open parking lot for us long. So where we got to take that take off. And this thing will like break for you. It's wild. It's while it's it's available 400 mile range GM estimated on a full charge over 10 feet of length in the bed with the multi-flex tailgate combined with the multi-flex mid gate, a large 17 inch diagonal display screen. It can tow up to 10,000 pounds of max towing zero to 60. Here we go. Zero to 60 in under 4.5 seconds with wow mode, WOW mode 4.5. That's what I ran at pro day back in the day. Uh, up to an impressive 785 foot pounds of torque. Head over to Chevy.com to learn more about the new EV electric vehicle with Silverado. I, I think that's, I think that thing's going to be sick, dude. The Silverado. I'm excited to see like these EVs like come into the world anyway, like your big time players making their electric vehicles. Um, well, let's recap the weekend. Did you guys have a good Easter weekend? Solid. What'd you do, Jack? Just hung out. My uh, my younger brother was in town, um, but nothing crazy. Nothing crazy? Nah. Dude, Rue had a blast, bro. Rue, yeah. Rue's, listen, she's a socializer now. She likes to socialize. She has fun at the parties. I'll tell you what, though. We fucked with her nap schedule yesterday and uh, gave her a short one late morning and then a short one like mid, later afternoon. And when she woke up from the one in her mid later afternoon, like she literally was just fucking pissed, crying the entire time until bed. And that's not an exaggeration. We didn't know how to, we were calming her down for a second. And then it just, she was just pissed, bro. It was, it was a learning experience. It was like, all right, let's not fuck around with the routine because we got a late invite to uh Bakhtiari, his Easter party, which was a great time. The boy Bak, Hey, what a host. Like they had the family over. They had a lot of different people and the weather now that's low key. Shout out, no free shout out the fucking weather now coming around. We're in the seventies now, but all, all to say we had a, a good Easter weekend. The masters, how do you say his last name? Ron, John, Ron, John Rom, John Rom, bro. Hats off to him. What I love most was the, was the law of attraction post from Panda express back in 2013. He had a tweet that said, I'm going to win the masters one day. I'm paraphrasing. I'm going to win the Masters one day. And it was a photo of a fucking um, fortune cookie that said, basically, one day your skills and significance will be shown or some shit like that, dude. But for it to come full circle and him win the Masters, and what a, you know, unfortunately, the boy Kapka. Kapka. See, I'm kind of, you know, I'm getting versed. I saw him on the, what is it called? Full Swing, the little Netflix documentary with golf. Yeah, he's got a really hot wife, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's a cute wife. Seems like a good personality. But um, it seemed like the boy kind of folded on that last round. Again, new at golf. Who am I? Cheap cheap tickets. I'm buying the cheap seats. I'm just watching it. I'm just tweeting. Um, but John Rahm, the, uh, here's the fortune cookie. The fortune cookie said, your talents will be recognized and suitably rewarded from Panda Express at the Panda Inn. Dude, that's fire. And then he goes on to wins. And then he has that little speech where he talks about Zach Ertz. 
jinxing him for you know first what did he say he four putted the first hole yeah zach Ertz had texted him and was like first hole looks wide open like a walk in the park and then yeah, yeah he ends up bogeying it what a vibe group chat to be in too like while you're in the masters and kind of like you know let's not get let's not take ourselves too serious let's go out here and have fucking fun um but also we had new merch guys we sold like several hundred units of our golf merch that just dropped. And this, this golf merch is without polos. We got a little wild hair. The boy Garrett, shout out Garrett for uh, making this merch up. The dude was grinding to get something put together because it's just something about golf. I feel like we need to lean into, or I would like to lean into and get out. Jack, I know you and Garrett, you guys both golf and it just seems like a good time. You do too, Mitch. We'll get the boys. We'll get the boys together. We'll have yeah, to we a, need to all get out there. Scramble and I'll use one of your guys' best ball every time. Because I like you're gonna want to use Garrett. Garrett is by far the best golfer. Yeah, you and Garrett are gonna be together because Garrett is like damn near. That's, trash. That works for me because that's how I used to do when we were in Washington and we'd be in OTAs. We'd probably golf a couple times a week, and the vibes were always high, like stogies and bogies, boys. Like you throw a stogie in, you get the vibes going with the tunes. As long as the group you're with, they don't mind music being played in the background. And just some good old fashioned shit talking, and you was all it would always be nice and competitive because we're talking some linebackers. We'd have a linebacker group, and nobody was good. We just we'd know how to talk shit. We were always competitive, and it took us like three hours to do nine holes. I shit you not. Um, but got away from it coming to Tennessee. I felt like there wasn't like circles and crews that did the whole golfing thing the way we did in Washington. So got away from it a little bit to where I'll just do it once or twice a year. And I know, again, like Jack and G, Mitch, just learning that about you too, are into it. And it's like, I just got a wild hair this year. Like the weather's breaking a little bit. And it's like, yo, I have a set of night, or I think it's the Callaways. Got some Callaways. I got me a little three hybrid. Is that what it's called? Those are clubs and brands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got me a little three hybrid that I used to fucking grip and rip on. And I'm just like, it's hard to beat a day on the course with your boys. It like really is. Cold beer flowing camaraderie all-time high, a little bit of shit talking and, and competition. And again, you're also like out there, it's always good to go with like a good golfer. I'm, I'm not, like I know you guys are like, oh, we're not good because there's a wide range of what's good and bad in golf. It's like, I know Jack and Garrett are good, but what is that compared to guys who talk about scratch golfing and shit like that? Isn't Garrett like actually a... Garrett, I bet. What's your handicap right now, G? Like five, four? I've watched Garrett shoot a 69 before. So that saying that's that, what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I'm trying to think I've never truly kept score. Like I've always, it's always been scramble. Let's play a scramble. Let's get with a couple guys. Usually you're with the better one. And then you might hit a few good balls that you're like, okay, I'm starting to get the fucking hang of this thing. My best round's an 88, but that's exactly what you need for a scramble. Just If you just get a couple good shots in, like you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're doing your part. Yeah. It's when you get a little, like when you do, I've done a couple of the charity ones too, where it's like, oh, you got to kind of golf on your own. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. Cause I'm going to lose balls. Like, listen, let's not, but you can knock me down a peg, but let's not step on my throat. And I'm just golfing by myself. But the bus and golf club is just lifted off. We have polos coming, uh, but you can go on our Barstool merch store right now and check out our, our golf collection. We got some bus, bus and golf club. For the boys, F O R E, um, some fun stuff: tees, hoodies, hats, uh, all that kind of stuff. Also, but, if there is a golf club in Nashville that wants to host the boys, do not hesitate to do reach not out. hesitate to reach out. We are looking for a good time. I'm yeah. talking. It'd be nice to go. You know, I don't know what often looks like, but you know, once once a week, once every other week is what I'm sitting here thinking in my head. Oh yeah, but we need to start making content on the golf course and kind of lean into the culture because I think the culture like. It's getting cooler, in my opinion. Like, there's a younger generation coming through now. I feel like it's adapting a little bit more. And also the respect. You got to shout out the respect that the old heads have established over time. But, yeah, any club out there? I know people talk about the Richland Country Club. What are other ones out there? I mean, there's, there's a bunch. Like Richland, obviously, is a private course, so you have to be a member there or have to know someone there. But so you can't just go and buy around at one of these no, private No, 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 no. But, like... I don't even know if I want to say like the courses just so like no free shout outs. Yeah. But, uh, we can believe it if we want to hermitage golf club is where we play a lot. Um, it's that's like, where you can buy around. Yeah. You can just buy it to play. That to me is the best public course in middle Tennessee. Um, so that's good. The bridge out in Franklin, we played a lot. Harpeth Hills you can play, which isn't you know, necessarily the best, but it's, it's solid. 
Um, no more free shout outs. Let's stop yeah. it there. Let's cut it there. We got, there, there's a few out there that the boys need to re be represented that are putting on good courses, but also like no free shout outs. Do summer Fridays at a golf course. Summer Fridays. Have you ever heard of that? No, but well, like, I, it sounds like a, something companies right do own. like have a thing called summer Fridays where like they get off at like two, like their, their day ends early. It's a summer Friday and then yeah. they're just done for the weekend. Kind of like that vibe. I'm telling you, it's a good time. I, I like it's. I can't wait to get into it. I think it'd be fun too to do like a little weekend sand volleyball league. I, I'm so about that. We go um, pickleball. I'm Cl I'm in place, one place where you used to live. Um, the sand yeah, bar. yeah 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 down by Ava Avo Avo. Yeah, I think it's called the Sandbar. Um, where they got Coco's ice cream. Yeah, dude, that's a that's a good little vibe. Yeah, that's I definitely tried to do that. I mean, I've been seeing a uh, green light pod. They have they're in, like a softball league, and I feel like we need to start embracing like. That camaraderie, whether it's softball, intramural sports, yeah, intramural sports, intramural oh, sports. Hell yeah, it'd be fun if we could get like a crew and we could get a few other like cats around here. I'm sure like Donnie would be like trying to play and like some other guys that are Nashville locals. So maybe maybe we need to get into. A yeah, few there's some sports. sports out there we can get into that yeah. we can start diving. Hardy and Morgan do. Do they? Yeah, we need. I think we need to build a team, but we need to build a team where we're trying to go national. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like we're no. trying to fucking. In, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, other news in Nashville Big Jeff Simmons Resigned we, Let's get some class boys I think that's a That's a massive uh, You know Fucking Corner piece For the Titans Getting uh, The big ugly Jeff No No disrespect to your looks Jeff The big ugly As in your defensive lineman But Agreed to a four year extension 94 million dollars the boy, I think it was like 66 guaranteed at signing, but massive moves for the Titans to to keep Jeff home and to keep Jeff around, basically the culture and being the leader that he is too in that locker room. But big shots to Jeff. Another big signing over the weekend was uh, OBJ to the Ravens. You guys saw that? Oh, yeah. Boy, OBJ put a gun to the Ravens' head and said, I, I need $18 million. Dude took a year off. Year off after year tearing off. his ACL in the Super Bowl. Yeah, his his availability's been up and down, mostly down. And he literally took the Ravens for all that they're worth. I don't know if that was a tactic by the Ravens to keep Lamar negotiating or in. Like, at the end of the day, Lamar can sit there if he believes in his heart of hearts that he is doing everything he can to be healthy, that he's going to have a healthy year. You can bet on yourself and play on these one-year tags. He might have to play on a couple of them. I'm pulling from that experience because that's what Kirk Cousins did. He played four years with Washington. He wanted a long-term deal with the Washington Redskins at the time. And in his mind, because I would remember when we talked with each other about it, because Kirk thought about holding out at times during training camp, but Kirk didn't want to do that because he knew that he was in the quarterback position. He wanted to still be a leader. He wanted to be around the guys. He knew that how that would look in the media and everything else if he tried to hold out in that capacity. So Kirk essentially would just bet on himself by play. He played on a franchise tag. It's one of the first players, maybe the first, but one of the first players to play on a franchise tag back to back years because the Red, the Redskins would offer him Bruce Allen and Dan, they would offer him like a three year deal, say 75 million, 50 guaranteed. And the way Kirk looked at it as, yo, I'm going to be making, I'm going to be making, what was that? 2016, 9.9 .9 fully guaranteed. I'm going to be making 20 in year one and 24 in year two, you're I'm essentially getting close to 50 million just in two years without having to sign an upside deal of that, you know, of what getting up to 75. So once you do that and you make it to the end, now I know it pissed them off to get, get tagged a second time, but you make it to the end and you get the free agency. You now hold the cards. You now hold the leverage to get that contract that you're wanting because Kirk wanted to help try and establish changing the game a little bit to get these fully guaranteed deals in the quarterback uh, position. Lamar could look at it the same way. And I know I'm, I kind of started talking about OBJ and brought it into Lamar, but if that's a tactic that they're trying to do to get Lamar, if you're Lamar, you can sit there and be like, you feel comfortable going into this year playing on a tag because you're going to get the average of the top five. I believe that's still what it is. You get the franchise tag is ultimately the top five at your position. You get the average of that contract. Lamar is somebody who you look at and you would pay a long-term deal to to get that guaranteed money. What hurts the cons with somebody like Lamar is he's also like kind of a skilled quarterback. He can run the ball. He's He tore his PCL or he damaged it enough to be out toward the end of the year this year. You kind of have a little bit more risk there. But again, if you're a quarterback or if you're in his shoes, you look at, you know, 
betting on yourself if you're looking to get to that fully guaranteed deal because that's the kind of song and dance you do with an organization. Now to get back on the OBJ thing, like, holy shit. That'd be like some team paying me $5 million a year. That would, I just need to hold that for a minute just so whenever the clip cut off. That, that'd be like paying me $5 million a year. Because, you know, people are going to fucking try and body bag your boy because, you know, I played on minimum for several years. Um, but, yeah, hey, you love to see it. You're all, we're, all, we're all pro player on this podcast. You love to see the boy Odell get one for basically 15 up to $18 million. I think he gets 15 guaranteed. I think it's fucking insane. Just because, again, like the availabil availability he's had, you're paying him like a number one wide receiver. And I, I just don't know. You know, I, I'm rooting for him to be the Odell of old that we know or that we knew. I'm not going to say he's old and washed, but you hope to see that Odell come back. But to have him establish that kind of money being out of the game for a full year and coming off an ACL and the injuries he's had. I mean, bravo fucking finding somebody who's paying you that money. But absolutely insane. It looks like he walked into a bank and said, throw the money in the bag. Um, he's one of those players, though, where outside of skill base, he brings like a huge upsell and ticket value, like for the Ravens. Like people will want to come just see Odell because he's one of those premier athletes that have made like a statement name in this game. So, like, I feel like he's only like a, one of a few people where like he can get that money taking a year off, having the injuries just because he is bringing that star a, power. Yeah, he's just such a household name now in the league, even though he hasn't played in a year. Like, I would still, like, want to go see Odell play because it's Odell. That's fair. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. You love to see just the numbers. I I'm curious what the, the market he had. He must have had a market if he's able to get that money because if not, why would you come out of pocket for so much money? You know what I mean? To to acquire somebody like Odell. But I I'm with you. He, he does bring that superstar power, that fame aspect, because it's Odell Beckham. I mean, this he changed the game forever when he caught that one-handed catch. Reach back like one three. Yes, bro. And like kids, the, the the all the antics and everything else. Like Odell, I hope he has a breakout year. Like he's a stud. I want to see that Odell Beckham of of old come back and bounce back. But mm -hmm. I just think if you're looking at this objectively, you're just thinking, holy fuck, oh, how yeah. did he Shit, how did he pull the yeah, how did he pull yeah. this off? He immediately comes the best receiver on the team though. Like that's what they're where the Ravens were struggling with having them like they had Mark Andrews, the tight end. Mm -hmm. but like they had Rashad Bateman, who's a rookie, who hasn't, who's been struggling with injuries. Like they had uh, Marquise Brown, but they got rid of him a couple years ago. So like he immediately becomes their best threat. So maybe that's why. Hey, I'm gonna be your best receiver on your team. Pay me like it. Right, which is fair. But when you say pay me like it, and again, just playing devil's advocate, which I love the the your points, Jack, and your points too, Mitch. But playing devil's advocate, it's like yeah, pay me like it. But also, what have you done in the last couple of years? Well, Again, I mean, it must have meant he had a market to get that money because if not, you can essentially, if you're the Ravens, pay something on the low end range of what a, a number one would be or a number two, I guess, and put a lot more in incentives. I'm impressed how he got so much. He got 15 basically of the 18. I think that's what's impressive versus being a more uh, potential based, you know, incentive type package to get the full 18. But he like when he was healthy on the Rams, like he went, he he got he caught a touchdown. It seemed like every week when he was with them, with, right? As, as fine as he, as soon as he got on the team. But like that, I mean, that was a knee surgery ago, and like people say, his knee was still messed up during that time. So if right. he's if he's fully healthy, I mean, he's thirty, which is kind of middle age for a wide he's receiver. He's still solid. Like, he's the still good, athletic as hell. Right. The, and the benefit, too, he's 30. Like, I know people, once you hit 30 in the NFL, you're kind of on the, you're kind of getting older, longer in the tooth. But the benefit of Odell being 30 is you're still in prime years of just, like, peak athleticism. Like, I, I want to say you fully develop or you can be in your prime around, like, you know, it's like 27, 28 years old, I think. I'm kind of talking out of turn there. But, the benefit of Odell is he hasn't had to put on the wear and tear the last two years I know of. Cause, Essentially cause, two years. Yeah, because with the Rams, he didn't have to go through a training camp, didn't have to go through the offseason. Everything has been to progress him health-wise in the offseason. Uh, but he didn't have to put a training camp on his body. He didn't have to last year because he sat out the entire year. That is very beneficial when looking at it because he could be in still incredible shape. 
Like he could be, he could pop off this year. Again, I'm just impressed that he, that his agent, that they negotiated that contract the way they did. Like kudos to him and shout out the boy. I just think it's nuts. Like it's not, not nuts. Again, if he had the market, then he had the market. But it's just interesting to see that he made that amount of money after taking a year off coming off of an ACL. Uh, what else do we have, boys? Before we get into this coin toss, this episode is brought to you by Sport Clips. No free shout out to Sport Clips. It can be stressful to describe the kind of haircut you want. And even if you feel like you got it across, it's hard to know if your stylist really understood you. Too often, hair care results in a hair scare. Fortunately, the stylists of Sport Clips take haircuts very seriously and speak the language of hair. You could say that they're fluid in phase, literate in long locks, and just all around clipper confidence. It doesn't matter if your hair is balding or billowing. Sport, sport clip stylists are black belts in cutting men's hair. They've been specifically trained to do so. These pros are artists and you are the canvas and each of your hair follicles is the happiest of trees. So sit back, relax. It's MVP haircut experience time. That means seven pressure point, massaging shampoo, a perfectly steamed hot towel, and the freedom to not have stress about a bad cut. Next time you need a cut, come to Sport Clips and get a head-turning haircut from the pros in men's hair. Uh, did you want to talk about LSU at all? Yeah. Yo, your boy's rocking the uh, the Fred shirt right here. Yo, Fred's was a vibe. Big shout out to Fred's. Fred's uh, A-plus hosting and hospitality. The crawfish boil went up in my book. I was excited to change my mind about that. Learn how to eat crawfish a little bit better. Or, I guess, you know, got reminded how to eat crawfish. It, it had been so long, but... Shout out Fred's. That was a good time. That was a good vibe. I and I stand I stand by what I said to the crowd too. Like Louisiana is a different entity. Like it's separated from everything else. Like that thing is, it's it's like its own ecosystem down there. I, Bloss, I told the crowd, I was like, it's like a subway and a gas station. Like you fuck with it, but you know it's not gonna pass inspection. Like that's the vibe of Louisiana. Very hospitable, good people. But you know, people that that think just they got their certain way of going about business, which you fuck with because it's like, oh, this is how they breed fucking these athletes down here and everything else. But you're just in the swamp, dude. And you're meeting. We didn't even meet swamp people like that, but we got to we got to get a little look. You know what I mean? But uh, sh hey, shout out though to LSU. That was a good time. As far as where they rank on the list, I think we've established them. In my opinion, I know everybody else has their own, but they are they not even close. There's not a three out there that's close. They are number two in my book as far as facilities and everything else goes. I think they have the number one locker room I've ever seen in my life as, far as, as facilities. Still Nebraska one, but I do have LSU two. And as far as uh, hospitality and their people in their front office and everything, I say front office, but their people in their offices, they took care of the boys. They were good to you guys. They were good to us. They were very hospitable. They took us everywhere. Let us see whatever. Coach Kelly was awesome, although I do think he lied about the whole family accent. I think he just needs to lean into it and be like, yeah, okay, I fucked up. I tried that. I fucked up. Uh, but LSU was fucking awesome. We're going to Colorado this week. Colorado Buffalo. We're going to try, not try, we're going to get in. We're going to get behind enemy lines, start to start to shit talking a little early to get this Colorado, Nebraska game back where, back where you, back where it was back in the day. Um, hopefully we can chirp Dion a little bit. We don't know if we're going to get to sit with him or not, but hopefully we get to chirp him, but we got to get that. Uh, we got to get that rivalry going again. Uh, we're going to be, like I said, performing in, in Denver that night. So if you guys want to get your tickets, that's online, get them wherever. Uh, it would be nice to be celebrating it would have been nice to hit a show 420 in Colorado. You know, the way they celebrate, it's a little bit different. But I, I don't know about you guys. I won't speak for you guys, but your boy, I've been banged up. You know, I've been banged up before. You know what I mean? Like one time after I brushed my teeth, I threw my hat back on and laid in bed. My wife was asking, hey, do you think you're going somewhere? And you're just fucking out of all sorts. But I'll just say I would love to be there for 420 with Colorado. Shout out 420. Um, Shout out, no free shout out. And then we get the draft. And then we talk about this David Bakhtiari episode. This Bakhtiari episode, honestly, this year, one of my favorites. We got to hit on, we got to talk about the NFLPA, a lot of the union stuff, a lot of uh, things with David himself that he's gone through. This man's a, a fourth round pick, earned himself a fat bag 
when he got to his second contract. This is a five-time All-Pro, a three-time Pro Bowler, has been injury-ridden the last couple of years. He tore his ACL a couple of years ago, and he's had it's been a roller coaster for the boys. So we obviously dive into the nuts and bolts there. Taylor and him tore their ACL in the same year, so they were able to. Uh, it was fun to sit back and listen to them, kind of talk through some things. But there's been headlines and articles that have been coming out. I know when I was searching and kind of doing research on Bach, um, you know, you see stuff that Green Bay media is saying the Packers are hosting successor of David Bakhtiari, like they're looking at left tackles. And I don't know how true that is, but the way the media is kind of going about uh, the left tackle is like, hey, after this year, do you look to cut? Do you look to save money? Do you look to do this with Bakhtiari? And we got into some big, good conversation about kind of that noise that goes on. You come from five years of being an all-pro and being a pro bowler to where you are the fucking man at Green Bay, and everybody loves you. They want you to be here forever. To now you get to the back end and you go through some injuries and you get you have some ups and downs and you start to you know, get a little bit more hate and you kind of hear all the chirps going on. And now people are talking about your replacement and how does that make you feel? And he had a lot of good stuff to say. So I'm excited for you guys to listen to that episode. It's a banger. And one of my favorites, again, we talk a lot about some of the union things going on with the NFLPA, because as we know, the boy Taylor, he fucking hates the NFLPA. Um, we dive into a little bit more there, some nuts and bolts with all that, but it's a good episode. Before we get to it, we will do our favorite segment of the week, our shout out, no free shout out. Um, Bloss, would you like to start this thing off guys? And if you're new to the, if you're new to the show, shout out, no free shout out is simply you want to shout out whatever you want. A lot of the times it's the simplicities in life that go unnoticed, that don't get talked about enough that might go under the radar that we like to put a spotlight on or like Bloss likes to do. He shouts out people from the 49ers. If you got a team you love, if you got a vibe you like, if you want to shout out somebody or something, you can do it. The shout out, no free shout out segment is for Whatever you want to shout out, give a little bit of praise to spotlight a little bit. Uh, Blossy, what do you have for shout out? No free shout outs, brother. My shout out this week goes to those people in your life or in your close circle who just put you on all the time, whether it's putting you onto a new meal, putting you onto some new clothes, some new shoes, a new brand, or a skill in general. I've had the pleasure to have some people who are pretty skilled in the barbecue world. And they've just been coaching me and putting me on to some new styles and ways to cook. And I've been trying to trying them and implementing them into my own. And uh, yeah, it's been it's been a pretty uh, a pretty fun ride. So my shout out, no free shout out goes to those people in your close circle who just put you on. Love that. That's a solid one. Because that is true. Like whether it's a recipe, you're talking barbecue, the grills are out. The grills are coming out. And I have to think about my shout out, but the grills are coming out right now. And anybody who puts you on a new little recipe that you're vibing with, you can't wait to take a photo and be like, yo, I tried this and I fuck with it, bro. Jack, what do you got? Um, my shout out, no free shout out goes to, how do I put this into words? Really just like, I guess hanging with the boys, but it's more of like a traditional Friday night hanging with the boys. This past Friday night, me and a few of my friends hit up Dave and Buster's. Ooh. We went and saw the Mario movie. And then we weren't really ready to call it a night. So we went and walked around the Opryland Hotel. And if you've ever been in an Opryland Hotel, or if you haven't, you need to go experience it because you can walk around for an hour in this thing. They've got like three like atriums, like these massive fucking beautiful things, all these like wildlife and plants and like it's crazy rivers flowing through it. So we were just having a blast and it's just like giggling and like running around, like feeling like you're like 15 again, like just got dropped off by your mom at the movies and like you got like five hours to go and just like do whatever. So we were kind of like getting back to our roots. So shout out to like good quality time with the homies. Um, on a Friday night, you get in bed at a good hour, wake up fully rested and ready to go for Saturday. Love that. Mitch, big head. My that fit. What? That's the fit. Dad. <laughs> You know what? Actually, I'm going to change my shout out to Hats That Fit because our busting hats have not, don't, aren't for big headed people. And as a, a an employee of Bussin, I feel like we need to maybe expand our hat sizes a little bit because there's, there's fellas out there. I'm not, I'm not by myself. We've been at a, like these live shows and everything. Some of these guys are like, Hey, like I'm with you. Like I stand with you. My, these hats, I stand with you. As Mitch is sitting there, like, looking at him with a fucking little hat on. Yeah. Like a rubber band fitting. just grabbing the skin. And he's like, bro, these hats do not fit me. I'm like, I've been telling people that these, we need to get bigger hats. But, like, some of these, the, I traded a dude for a hat at LSU. 
because the one I was wearing what uh, did wasn't fitting as well as the one like he had. So I traded him. Shout out, tr- shout out you, Kyle. I think your name is is Steve. Yeah. Uh, but sh- the the hats that fit, they're 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 few and far in between for me. It says the one size fits all. Now it's one size fits most. Um, so shout yeah, shout out hats that fit. Have you ever looked into? Um, and this is for you to speak on, not 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 us. But have you ever like looked up, like Googled diets to help your head shrink? Not, not, I don't think that it works like that, but I have. You never looked, know. You don't put it like your this. head is your skull. No stone left unturned. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like, have there you could looked, be a diet out there for them big headed motherfuckers, dude. You can shrink your waist. Why not your head? Because your waist is fat. Your head is your skull. There's no fat in this. This is all brain. I have looked up though, and I actually got it for Christmas this past Christmas, like hat extenders. So like, the, you know how like obviously the snapbacks, you can get like an extra thing of snapback. To extend it a little bit. So I have those. Full 30 recipes for your head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ketogenic diet for your brain. Oh, fuck. Good times. My shout out, no free shout out, is going to go to. The vibes are high right now and it involves the weather. I would just shout out the weather, but I feel like that's low hanging fruit. Something that we've started, been able to start doing is you're able to open up the doors. You got a couple weeks here before it starts to get too hot. Not a couple weeks, like a longer than that. But this or today, right before I came here, my wife had opened up the back doors just because the light's shining and it's like the same temperature outside as it is inside. And you're just sitting on the table or working outside. But opening up the doors to like enjoy the weather, the grills are coming out, the doors are opening up, the windows are opening up, and the vibes are getting higher. That seasonal depression you might have had, it's turning around. Because that that breeze and it's a light breeze right now, which makes you feel good. It's not it's not hot yet. You feel the sun and you can still get a little bit of a burn, but it's not getting it's not moist yet in the air. The bugs aren't out. And right now, for the next few days in Nashville, all week I think it's going to be in the seventies. Sun's going to be out, but that's my shout out, I guess. Fucking temperature equilibrium. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Temperature equilibrium. The small things that involve the sunny weather, the spring weather. Um, all right. I just texted Taylor. He's ready whenever you are. So here's what we got going on this weekend. We get to do the Arizona state spring game. Not only do we get to do the Arizona state spring game, we get to coach in the Arizona state spring game. Taylor's going to coach uh, one team. I'm going to coach the other. We get to give pregame speeches to our teams. I think we get to call one series per like rules and everything else, but we get to call a series. We're going to get the headset. We're going to have our get back coach. We're going to be ready to fucking go. We're going to be in head coaching form trying to beat each other. Now there's a video that's came out at Arizona state. Where the players have been trying to select their guy. I feel like Team Compton's the underdog right now. Everybody wants the backyard. The local boy, Taylor Lewan, he's, he's an AZ boy. Um, but everybody's kind of pushing for Taylor right now. And I feel like whoever we get on the squad, we're going to get those guys with the chips on their, sho- on their shoulder. You know what I mean? Um, but what we're going to be doing right now is we're going to call Taylor. We're going to get him on speaker. And we're going to draft the back of the bus. Jack, JP, Garrett, and Mitch to be our two, I guess, assistant coaches. Vrabel or stretch. We're going to be drafting our stretch. Um, so we're going to get him on the phone. We're going to flip our, we're going to flip a coin to see who gets first pick. And then we're going to draft the guys on the back of the bus to be on the sideline with us, to make content, to be our get back coach and everything else. We're going to get JP and Garrett in here Yeah, to make we're gonna, it real intimate. Yeah. Garrett, JP, they're about to come on. Uh, they're going to get on the bus because we don't always have the back. The boys are back there working. By the way, if you guys are tuned in right now, uh, we dropped our LSU, our LSU spring tour interviews with Mason Taylor, the son of Jason Taylor and nephew of Zach Thomas. He's a fucking stud, man. I think he's going to be really good. Do I need to open that up? It should be. You good. just push it in. Um, uh, freshman tight end going into second year. He's a stud. He was awesome to sit down with. We also did Coach Brian Kelly. So. If you want some more content, the boys got it. Come on, NG. On the couch. Our under the hoods, our bus scenes. G, I mean, oh, fuck. Oh. We interrupt this episode to bring you the world's most comfortable boot. Designed for the longest shift and toughest job. Georgia boots. Shout out the boys. No free shout outs. Georgia's messaging relies on delivering boots that are as comfortable as they are tough. 
boots that you can wear from work to the bar, whether you're working on the front line, fixing that shelf in your closet, or grilling out back. These Georgia boots are the best boot for the job. Georgia boot are, is designed specifically with comfort in mind, featuring cushioned insoles and supportive technology for all day comfort. They're engineered to provide protection from harsh outdoor conditions and environments, ensuring the safety and comfort of the wearer. Georgia boots are also available in a range of styles and designs catered to preferences and needs of a diverse customer base. Listen, you guys know I'm pro Georgia boot. I actually wanted to wear a look I'm going to start bringing or because I've done it a couple times, but you get the button down shirt, the short shorts and just rock some boots, dude. And maybe like a bucket hat or something. But Georgia boot is the go-to boot of the boys for the boys. Use code BUSSIN, B-U-S-S-I-N, for 20% off at georgiaboots.com. Back to the episode. We have our lead umpire, J.P. Hovey, Hove, who's going to do the coin toss. Hold on, let's we get, need to get We need to get Taylor, Taylor on the phone. phone. Are you going to do it or do you want me to yeah, have yeah, it? Yeah, I can do it. This is big. I can't wait. You can't wait for the draft? Yeah. Why is that? You guys are picking? Yeah. The boy. The boy. Hey, you are uh you're tuned into the bus. JP. In. JP, what we have here, JP's gonna do a coin toss. It's gonna land right. on the middle table. You do you wanna call it or do you want me to call it? Um you go ahead and call it. Can, is JP showed the camera that there's both a heads and a tails? Yeah, okay. So which it. one? Silver and blue. Which one you want me on? The middle camera? Silver side? Blue side. All right, there's a silver side and a blue side. Flip it and let it land on the table? Flip it and let it land on the table, Taylor? My hands are sweating right now. Yeah, I don't know why I'm nervous. Maybe I catch it and yeah, flip. No, I'm, I'm, I'm stressed out, too. But here's what I feel good about. Regardless, I feel like we're both going to have great teams. So who's who? Silver? Are you blue, Taylor Silver? Will's calling it. Okay. I'll go. I'm going to catch it. I'll go with blue. You gotta do the I'll catch. go with blue. And You're going to catch, catch and flip? Yeah, yeah. Flip. All right, here. I should hold the mic because. All right, here. He's about to go. Yeah, ready. It's up in the air. It's flipped on the hand. Blue. Blue. Wait, so who won? I won. Oh, okay. I won. I get first pick. That's mm. how that kind of works when I'm not there, huh? I know, but fortunately, we have it on camera. You'll be able to tune in, bust on the YouTube channel. Um, oh, my first pick. Of the Arizona State spring game brought to you by Bustin' with the Boys is going to be JP Hovey. It's a lock, bro. <laughs> it is a lock. Hey, I got you a jersey made. The one you're gonna hold up the one first rounder. What um which team are we? I don't know. Uh, do you guys know what our teams are yet? Uh, Taylor and I have a phone call today with uh with the guy at Arizona State, so we're gonna kind of get privy to everything. Yeah. All right, Taylor, uh, you are on the clock. We should, we'll give you, we'll give you 30 seconds. We'll give you 30 seconds starting now. A lot of teams want to take the time to get the, the advertisement, right? Have all the people talk about their guys, their team as they go into the draft. I'll make it quick and easy. My first pick of the ASU spring game is going to be Mr. Jack McPherson. Nice, Jack. Congratulations, brother. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Here's the question. And look, there's no wrong answer here. You guys can say it out loud, but are we doing snake or do I get to go again? Like, does Taylor get two and three since I got one? Oh, wow. Which snake. one? Snake. <laughs> snake it is. <in. laughs> Why'd you say something if you're going to be mad? At me? Well, I had to bring it up because I, I had to figure out if Taylor's going to start speaking up again. Uh, imagine. Taylor, you get the, um, the boys think it's fair to only do snake drafts. So you get to pick the, you get to go first this time. Simple, simple. All right, my second pick and final pick of the AC Spring Game Draft brought to you by Bustin' with the Boys is going to go to Jared Hargis. Oh, oh that's that's a wrap. Nashville that's versus a out of state. That is Nashville versus the out of state boys. Hey, Mitch. Hey, we're happy to have you on the squad. It's irrelevant. <laughs> oh, it's an honor. You got a chip on your shoulder, Mitch. You got a chip on your... Yes, I know you are. All right, we're, that settles it. We're in good shape. Yeah, we're, we're in solid shape. Team Compton, it's uh, Hovey and Carsley. Carsley, right? 
And then for Team Luan, McPherson, and Hargis. <laughs> He's trying to get in there early. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get in the head early. Trying to get in that head early. Don't let him, well, don't let him don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. Don't even pay attention to it. Uh, Taylor, do you have anything you'd like to say? You have the floor. Uh, just, I'm excited. I got the team that I wanted. Both those guys are one and two on my draft board. And uh, being able to see Garrett fall in that draft and Jack fall in that draft really played it in my hand. Knowing that the two of them not only are individually outstanding competitors, but are also as a duo unstoppable. Mm. Amen. Amen. A lot like a Chevy, Chevy Silverado. I um, would say. Yes. Oh, all right, brother. Thank you. I hope you're enjoying the vibes and views in Canada right now. We all love you and we miss you. Can't wait to see you Wednesday. Love you guys too. I'll see you, coach. Wednesday in Colorado. <laughs> all right. See you, brother. Hey, it is sad that we're going to have to embarrass him in his home state. It's all right. Hey, you don't ever want to do that to somebody, but yeah, 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 yeah. I just really hope that ASU comes through with some elite coaching gear for us to be wearing. Yeah, I need a, I need a call sheet. I need a visor. A we're gonna go to, we, we gotta go to Dick's boys. Yeah. You're right, or Academy. I or already Academy. Yeah, or I Academy. already have a lot. Just to put that out. All there. right, I'm excited, man. He he feels good. He feels like he got the team he wanted. I actually, this is the team I wanted. Oh <laughs> damn, we that's crazy. Well, we should have maybe call him back. I think we need to put a little bit of a wager on this. Something. We'll figure it out in the group chat. All right. It doesn't have to be money. It could be something funny, you know? Right, right. That's what it takes some thinking about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, let's think about it. Let's not make an emotional. Screen record the text conversation and put it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can come up with something. Definitely something needs to be on the board. Um, all right. Hey, without further ado, here's David Bakhtiari, episode 215. We talk about the injury stuff. I, I can't remember. Aaron Rodgers, we cover a lot of stuff, but it's a good podcast. Subscribe, do all that stuff. Leave comments if you're watching YouTube right now. But shout out the boys, big hugs, tiny kisses. Let's go. He's probably got yeah, a hog. He's, he's probably got a piece on him. I go and get that mic no, next to your face. We're rolling. Pretty, We're rolling. Yeah, you, you've been Honestly, a locker room. You've been a locker room with him. Is it, does it match the feet? Does it match the hands? No, he's, he won't let me see. What do you mean? Oh, he's he won't a let shower you see. short guy. He, For the man who has nothing to hide but yeah. still wants to. He showers in shorts? No, he's the guy like, uh, you go pick a corner. Kind of going, what was, I, I think I told you guys this from last time I was in there. Uh, like my first weekend, play was like, dude, go shower next to Aaron. I'm like, fuck it. Like, I go pull, I go turn on the thing. He immediately turns it off and he like looked at me. And I'm like, well, do you want to share the same shower head? And he's like, get away from me. I'm like, okay. Turn oh. oh, he doesn't let anybody shower next to him. That, no, we had no, like he knew me maybe for like a week. That's what I'm saying. Like, it wasn't the chemistry. Like, now we know each other for like a day. Right, right, right. Now you're no. getting them golf carts. Yeah, no, that, yeah that, was, that was completely different. But uh, so if you shower, so now you shower in the same no, shower head? No, no, they don't. No. They, See, I, that's I have, unfortunately, like, cer certain guys like that. Like, I'm a type of dude that there's, I, I look at, there's like three types of like shower people. The guy who comes in with the towel and puts it over the shower head, mm -hmm. showers, immediately takes it off. Yet, no way of seeing. And then uh, two is you have the guy that, doesn't even go in with a towel. That's me. I go in and come out. I own what I got. Yeah. Nothing like it. There's no Godzilla hanging out. That's just yeah, what it is. I'm, I, I'm me. I'm proud. It's yeah. not much, I'm, but it's yours. And I'm you're proud of that. I'm the hardworking white guy that's right. going to come in and check in and check out. And he's going to get a good, good work, a good, good day's working. And then the number three is the dude that just, he takes a towel and puts it kind of over his belly button. Yeah. Are you, are you guys belly button? Uh, Depends oh. on how fat I am. If it's December, yeah, if it's I'm winter, like, oh, absolutely. That's so weird. I don't get that. I'll tell you what. There's a couple other guys you're missing. You even D brought it up with Aaron. Give it to me. The guy that showers in the corner and doesn't let you see anything the whole time. If he's rubbing his shoulder, he's got one over his parts. The, those are the guys I trust the least in the locker room. <laughs> if you're not going to let me look at that thing, or not look at it eye to eye, but catch a periff on it, yeah. you've either got something fucked up with you or you're holding something in here. You know, that's, that's just how I look at it. The other guy, and this is a very rare breed of individual, the individual that comes in the towel long ways tucked in the armpits and drapes over the front. And I the don't back think I've going. ever seen that. Kendall Lamb. I, he was, he what? he takes the towel, tucks it here, tucks it here, and it drapes long ways. But cheeks are out in the back. He must have them titties. Yeah, but when he sits down, he kind of lets the titties hang out. But he was also a no pee show guy. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, a, I, I like Kendall Lamb, but I'm also, I saw that and that did throw me off big time. What, what, what kind I'm of guys like, are you? I'm like a mix of what you said. Like, I bring the talent just because the talent excess. Like, I just don't want to walk. Like, I'm, 
I don't wear the slides. I go in. I more so it's put the guy thing. I more so put the towel on, and then I face. Wait, the you boys. don't wear slides. No, I don't wear slides. I got beef for that. That's because you got a dash or something else. I, we, the, you got the Caucasians out here. Next time you're in the locker room and you're in the shower, look, all the black guys, they got the flops on. They're literally putting one can leg. I explain? Up. Can I explain? Can yeah. I explain yeah, why yeah. I'm not as much a slide guy? Sure. Because I'll I'll wear the slides everywhere. So when I shower in them and they get wet, I gotta like I gotta do extra and dry them off after I get done I'm at the multiple, locker. I, in my locker, I got multiple. I have literally shower slides specifically for shower. You're that, off that's what I'm saying. Off I'll, I'll right now. What? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I, 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 I guess you know what? If I'm buying extra slides, yep, I got money then. No, I I, I can't I can't stand the. Uh, but I'm the just letting you know of, that that's why I do it. But that's why I would do it. Like sometimes I'll go slides in, but if I'm feeling like extra lazy, which is why I do the towel thing. I get it. Trust me. Like I get the, if you have a one pair of slides, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely thinking it over. And yeah. that's why throughout my years, I'm like, I'm getting multiple slides. One specifically for showering. Cause I can't, the thought of like, have I showered without, um, sandals on or yeah. slides? We want to call them. Yes. Mm -hmm. But here's another question. Have you ever gone to the bathroom without slides on? Absolutely. Disgusting. I mean, maybe rarely. I can't think of anything, but I can't say I never have. You know, what I mean? definitely that, like I, I, I'm, I, no, I, trust I me, won't I do the too. same thing. It, it's truly the wet slide thing. Like I'll get in once I drop at the locker, I'll throw my oh, towel on God. the slides and stomp on it, move it around. But then when I gotta sit down and then I gotta go up in the slide, then I'm like, ah, let me just because it doesn't matter. Like I'm gonna wash my feet and stuff. You know what I mean? But I also face the boys like in Washington. My nickname was Shrimp. Like, oh, there goes Shrimp. There go. Actually, it was uh, it was uh, it was Dunbar Dunny, and he would be like, there goes Shrimp. Why do they call you shrimp? Come on. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, why do they call you shrimp? That's a tough L to take. Yeah. It is, but... I'd always give a little little movement, pull it on a little bit before I walked in there. <laughs> uh, you, especially, you do your best. the first couple of weeks of OTAs, the hey, new guys nor, are coming normalize in. Normalize that. Yeah. Because the, everyone does it, but no bit. one wants to talk about yeah. it. I appreciate you bringing pull that up. Pull on that thing a little that, bit, because you don't want... It's hard because you're in spandex, and so it pushes it in. I know. You want to do a little an extra trick. This is This is game now, so listen up. <laughs> Fucking as you're pulling on your little piece, push up on the balls. <laughs> get, those guys, get those guys go like this a little bit. Like, oh shit, are we in trouble? Yeah. And then you fucking. Dude, you're just fucking. And that thing. Me. I'm just saying. <laughs> It's a while. The showering in the locker room is a unique thing. You learn a lot about a lot of people there. But I, yeah. there is massive differences between black guys like, and white okay. guys. Okay. I was going to say literally. Yeah. Like, and oh, I, before we even go into that category, I want to say my piece on the, sh on the showering barefoot. I'm a barefoot baller. I. If I don't have to wear shoes or socks, I will not wear shoes and socks. Do I go in there because... Wait, you're saying slides? shoes and socks like like all day or are you saying... If I could be barefoot all he'll day, do, I would. He'll, he'll be like a barefoot I'm guy all day. Like, I'm I work a big out. barefoot guy around yeah. work. I don't want to get fucking athlete's foot, but... Shit, you're a big you're barefoot guy around work? Oh, yeah. Like, I'll wear sandals. I'll take my shoes off anytime I can in meetings. Like, I'm not just going to coop my feet up with socks and shoes. I'm like, that's... So what's fair. the difference of be going in the shower where there's the soap kitchen. and everything else, but you're doing it around it's the literally floor? Literally, you're else. showering off dirt and disgusting grime. And I know all the other teammates. I don't trust any of them. And they're walking with their feet. And have you seen the bottoms of some of your friends, your teammates' feet? Yeah, they're crusty. That's why I'm like, nope, I'm not, I'm not dealing with that. But that is for you to have. I'm going to keep with you. I feel you. Everybody's got their own. That's probably and, and the whole you and Aaron, like uh, not you and Aaron, but it sounds like the Packers got a bit of a shower deal in the locker room where you guys don't. It's probably why you guys haven't won. Fully. Yeah, you guys, you guys start not, showering different. You, you know, I, win the I, hope, I, I hope that was the reason. Yeah, that, <laughs> that would, I'd love for that. Shower more. That we got to shower be, together more. Like, I got no problem with that. Yeah. God, that'd be a good camaraderie deal. <laughs> that'd be a nice deal. The last thing before I know you, you may want to move off the subject, but I'll stay here as long as you want. Good. Okay. All right. What is the how do I say this? You're safe. This is yeah. This is no. I'm I, no. I, I I do feel very safe, but like I'm trying to make sure I don't sound like an idiot. The oh, that's what you're trying to do. We call it meat gazing. Yeah, we're pro, yeah. We're pro so, meat gazers. But here's the thing: meat gazers, meat they're, peaking, they're, everywhere. They're, like you said, the peripheral. I respect that. That's natural. Yeah, totally cool with that. Then there's the meat gazers, like when I'm literally talking to you and I've met guys that are asking me like about the end of the day and then they keep talking, they go right back up. I'm like, so mm. that was not tasteful. That was actually very violated. I yeah. feel about violating and now I feel violated. Yeah. Therefore, like I want to end this conversation quickly, especially because yeah. I told you I'm, I'm not a towel guy. I go in, I shower, I come out. If you're going to check it from the periphery, that, that, that's your choice. Right, don't let cool me catch you looking at but it. Like when we're having a big conversation, I see you just drop down, keep going, and then come back up and be like, so yeah, what'd you think on that one-on-one -on -one right there? Was that, was yeah, that yeah, cool yeah. of you to do? I'm like, easy. I'm, I'm not going to drop names because I, I feel bad. Yeah. Uh, Vince Beagle, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it makes you feel, it makes you yeah, feel vulnerable. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. No, there's a couple guys. I mean, like we have, 
I just, I don't think it, like, I would be lying if I said I never saw an, another teammates meet, but on the same end. You mean you'd be lying? Yeah, you'd be lying. Uh, to I me, know. everybody's checked the meet. I agree. I, I'm just saying it annoys me when there's like a, oh, I've never, I don't check them. I'm like, okay, yeah. bullshit. The peripheral. I agree with that. That's why I wanted, I want to leave it open, like, for talk. Like, I wanted to leave yeah. this as a, as a yeah. place we can talk about. But the meat gazing, I actually do have a problem with. Yeah, I can get on board with that. I think it's meaning if they you're different. saying if they it's look at it like, and you, like fall, I said, you I'm you talking to you and I blatantly look down and have a conversation to come right back Absolutely. up. That it's like if I'm walking by catching eyes and I see in the periphery the bottom, like you should be good enough to like that. that, that that's good. Yeah, uh, cool. unless you unless you if, got a monster. If you got a monster, <laughs> it's a different deal. You can't help. Then you get you know you're yeah. making the other person uncomfortable. Because when we were when I was on uh, Tennessee my first time around, we was a walkthrough on uh, it was a Saturday practice, so we were doing a walkthrough before we traveled. And I would walk up and down the sideline basically and pull guys like if they admitted to meat peeking in the shower. And it was probably a good 70, 30. There were a couple guys like, oh no, comp, that's gay. Like, I'm like, all right, bro. Like, I know, like, we all know we've caught each other in our periphs. But I would go up and down the sure. sideline and ask guys, like, hey, be honest. It would be me and DB, Darren Bates. And we'd just be like, hey, be honest with us. Like, we're trying to pull everybody. We feel like it'll be more 50-50, but we want to give guys the chance to admit it if they have. Like, have you meet peak before? Like, caught periffs, gazed in the shower, anything. But the majority of guys did say yes. They felt comfortable enough. Yeah, like, we're comfortable with you enough to say it. Yeah, maybe. If you're in the middle of a conversation with somebody and you look down, then back up. Right? That's, okay. That's not all right. Thank you. But if someone's across the room, you catch a peak on accident, it's all right. You're just appreciating God's gifts. You're just appreciating. I My... The thing I always struggle with that I literally have to call myself out on is if I'm like drying off, I'm down here, I go to look up, I just catch eye to eye with it. That's when <laughs> I got to say, hey, brother, like you got to turn around when I'm doing this. So I, because I just looked right at your piece and I, I got to like tattle on myself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because that's always. Or it's just like, yeah, and they're working with something and you're just like, bro, come on, man. Like, you know, like, yeah. please cover it. I've said this before. Like, there was a guy in Michigan. Uh, his name was AP, I believe. Big head. Mitch and but he, this dude when his locker was near mine and that piece was like the size of that whistle pig whiskey bottle that thing stroked down into the right it was the most terrifying thing I've ever seen in my life it was that bottle you're picking up right now you know what I'm saying it was something else bro. so I told him I had to let him know yeah hey good for you he had a girlfriend that literally would brag about I'm the only girl to ever take all of it oh. I, I literally pulled her to the side at a party one time I was like you gotta stop telling people that yeah, like it's not, it's not. That's not something to be proud of. Like you gotta, you gotta lie and say I could barely take the tip. That's what you gotta do. But anyway, yeah, I guess so, man. Ten minutes in, boys. Good pod. <laughs> that's a big dick conversation right there. Yeah, ten minutes straight penis. Big dick conversation. Cool. Big dick energy in Have here. Have you gotten uh, tired of being asked about Aaron Rodgers? I mean, depends on who it is. No, I, 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 I it hasn't, hasn't really, uh, hasn't. I mean. It's been like that, like my whole career. So, like everyone, if, if, if like the if, last four or five years, if, if it ain't one thing, it's it's another type thing with him. So, uh, I'm, kudos to him. He's definitely like uh, always being talked about, very mysterious. I think he kind of likes that. Uh, but, I mean, honestly, it's been kind of chill as of late. He's he's a jet now, so it's a jet problem. So, is he, is he officially, officially a jet? No, but I mean, he's gonna be like allegedly. What what are they else gonna happen? Well, it's weird because if you're the I Packers, know, right? what are you gonna ask for Aaron? He's He's older. He's on the back nine of his career. He could literally every, like, last three years have been like, is he retiring? What's he yep. doing? What, what's the deal? And so he could literally go play for the Jets for one year and then retire. Is that worth a first-round pick? It doesn't. Like, but what are you going to do? I almost feel like Aaron has the leverage because if the Packers don't deal him, he could just, he's got, he's got it. What, he's got it all. He can just not show up. He can literally hold you hostage. He's got the leverage. And I feel like. That's how, that's how I feel about it. Yeah. Or option three. Yeah, tell us how and this tell us what option three could is, be. Again, I'm not being a homer. They're just thinking about the oh, situations. God. Just hear it out is the Packers are rebuilding, whether you think so or not. They don't like they could they be good? I don't know. Could they be bad? Probably if you're betting, more people are gonna think they're gonna be bad than good. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that fair to say? Fair. So then they'll be like, Well, we're gonna suck anyways. We want what we want, and we're not gonna bend anyone, so we'll just eat it. You can stay sell and retire, we'll pay you. We don't care because we're gonna it, if we're gonna do it our way. It's going to be on our terms. If not, we're, what are we like? We're, we're we going to be Super Bowl contenders anyway. So we'll eat it. You can hang on the side. We'll pay you your money, and then we'll suck anyways. Get the picks as compared to dealing him, but for you, something that you shouldn't have. You look like you could potentially look like an idiot. 
to not only president and the board, but everyone else around the league, thinking in the GM's perspective, put yourself on the hot seat and then potentially, you know, have your job come called to question. So I, I look at all these like ways you can, you can deal it. I don't think you'd get that contentious. I do think they'll probably come to an agreement. He'll get traded. They'll get what they want. And then I will probably say whether it was who won, who won what, but I'm saying there, I do think that it could be a third option if things got so You're bad. right. You're right. I've changed my mind. No, a we now. want this and that's it. Cause if we know we're going to get them like, okay, we'll going then. somewhere else. Well, cause what were you, what were you thinking? You, there, I, thinking I think there's I multiple thinking, options. They just say no, and Aaron still plays for the Packers next year, which I think is not happening. Yeah, I can't. Regardless. I can't. Say, I, I think that. I think that has officially probably been put it's, to rest. Yeah, I think they, they gave the stuff. keys to Jordan. Said that. I was gonna say the last thing you want to do is like. I was gonna say you say suck. It's like they want to move forward with Jordan Love. Somebody they draft in the first round and probably feel good about. It's like you never know. Either way, they want to move forward with Jordan Love. So you look at history. You're right. You look it's at like, history with the Packers. I mean, when Aaron came in, Favre, that whole thing was essentially the same situation. Yeah. It's crazy. The entering of Aaron, mm, the entering of Aaron into the Packers organization, very like it, eerie similar to how Jordan is, and same with the exit of himself, very eerie similar to Brett. It's like kind of weird how time is. Yeah, time is circle. History repeats Glad itself. Circle. Exactly. So uh, again, like I said, I, I don't know. Could could the Packers be really good? Yeah, I, I certainly would love that and hope so. But also, I'd be ignorant to say that. Is this look like a rebuild? Probably. The so, Packers probably won't eat it though. They'll probably take whatever the best deal they can actually. But if they feel like they're getting get like out of it, like I think there's a principal aspect to it. If you feel like you're going to get fucked over so much, where you're like, you know what, screw it. Were we going to go to the Super Bowl? And everyone was saying we probably weren't anyway. So fuck it. We'll hold on to him, eat it. Our cap will we'll make the cap, which I think they're in position to take on his full salary, because mm-hmm. obviously they wouldn't want to, um, like show their hand and then just be like, okay, fine then. We know we're not going to use you. We appreciate everything you're doing. Like, fuck you to the other teams aren't giving us what we want. We're not going to just give you whatever you want, Aaron. Because So I, I can see it all going in different ways. Because I see Aaron's leverage. I see the Jets' leverage. I see the Packers' leverage. I'm like, it's fun to talk about. It is. But, right. I mean, I think, the, Thrones. Yeah, I think yeah. the most simple thing is going to be they'll get whatever picks that they really wanted. Obviously, so, right. They'll come. To yeah, some it'll kind come of... before the draft. They'll yep. get it. They'll use it. And then time's going to show us. Because even that leverage that you're talking about with the Packers, like just that ability to be like, hey, we can, we can, we can not do anything. And it, we're, we're prepared to do that. If you can walk away, like that's the strongest yeah. kind of leverage to have. So at least you'll still get Is it likely, as much though? as you like, can. Could you see an organization doing that? I don't fucking think so. Like, but is but it that possible? Ta- but that tactic yeah. will, uh, yeah. will get you some more. Yeah. I mean, like it's a big time comes. Like there's so many people that have to agree on it because there isn't like an owner. But if you're an owner and you feel jaded by a guy and like slided by him like you see certain big name guys get like like Odell felt very slighted from the Giants and they have no one to be like you know what F you we're going to send you to like basically like uh, where careers go to die we're going to send you Cleveland. to Cleveland at the time yeah that's where careers go to die like old before so nothing's really changed like, yeah. <laughs> until like, they start winning the only thing that's changed true. Cleveland is every offseason they're the Super Bowl winners <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah that's very like, true the only person's career that's not dying there is uh, who's the freak Miles Garrett Miles Garrett dude that guy's a stud. he's just a fucking stud oh, yeah. It's just one freak, one horny guy, and a bunch of dudes doing their <laughs> right. best. And a bunch of the dudes doing their but best. But you're right. There's some personal that gets involved, but it's always still, it's still thought out in a way to where you make something shake. Yeah. I, I, you're I, right, I, Yeah. I, I mean, like, I, if I you want to see. Aaron has all the leverage thing. Yeah, I mean, again, like, Aaron's my guy. I totally, like, I would absolutely be on his side with that. But, like, I look at the whole situation. I'm like, okay, I see probably where the Packers are posturing. see where the Jets are posturing. I see where Aaron, Aaron's posturing. And, like, what take out all the bias, like what really could happen. Like, okay, go look at, try and gather as much information and go look at what's, mm-hmm. what's pl- plausible. Packers obviously feel this way. It's probably why they're sitting, standing on what they're standing on. Aaron, obviously probably going on saying the things he said because the leverage he has, mm-hmm. which we all see. And then obviously with the Jets. So it's going to be interesting. I think uh, I'm going to sit back and just watch. That's what people come ask me. I'm like, dude, we're all watching the out. Yeah, so I'm like, this is good TV. Like, fuck yeah, it. Like, yeah. <laughs> I get good. I can just shit talk Aaron about it the entire time whenever I want. Like, this is funny. Like, it's from it's a, a personal standpoint, though, it's got to hurt a little bit. Like, it's the, the changing of the tides. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, and that is one of your best one, friends. It seems like you guys are incredibly close. Yeah, yeah. A one, 100%. Yes. But like, two, we can relate on this. Like, it, it's look, look at our careers. Like, Things come, things go, things happen. I'm sure in your like time in, uh, with the Titans, like 
you saw your homies that were there and then your homies started getting getting cut and getting released. Guys you thought were untouchable start getting cut. And then you realize like, you know what? It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Yeah. So when I started accepting that like years ago, I'm like, yeah, I mean, Aaron, who's like, of course, you think the most untouchable person. I'm like, I know it's going to happen at some point. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, dude, go get yours. If you want to go somewhere, like I will never be jaded by your business decision because I always care more about Aaron than I do about 12. Yeah. Like for the Green Bay Packers. So go, that's go. Nice, that's a nice quote. Go, go do your thing, man. Like I'm, I'm cool with that. And I've said that to trailer. Thank you. I, I've said that to like all my teammates once I understood it back in like, I think when Josh Sitton got cut mm-hmm. for me, that was my like, holy shit. Uh, Josh is my, uh, was my left guard. Bro, yeah, you guys had a, a nice little room, it seemed like. Was, you guys seemed super close back then. Yeah, we like honestly, we had, that was probably like when someone says like the good old days, like you wish you knew when, you, when you're mm, in the good old days. office quote, yeah. yeah. So that was, uh, that I mean, that I would say in my tenure, like that was the closest like that room has been. Like just a bunch of studs, fun. Uh, but yeah, like once I saw guys getting cut and getting chopped during that era, I was like, okay, so. I mean, it happens, dude. So I've always told like any guy, I even told Corey, I'm like, dude, go get yours. I'm, I would never be jaded if you, I'd be more jaded if you took less money because you thought that like, oh, I got to be with my guys and, and not take care of yourself. Like, right. I'm still going to like you no matter what. I said to Devonte, I said to Corey, I've said it to even Elton coming up. I'm like, go do what's best for you. Don't think about, take your emotion or like friendship stuff out of it. Like, this is a business. So it's so hard though, man, because football is so built around team, mm-hmm. the boys, and sacrifice and selflessness, and like, yeah, the boys, man. It's so built around that, and it's so ingrained in you. And even when you have your team, like your ninety man roster, and you're kind of going through the off season. Some of the guys know who's going to be there and who's not. And then in training camp, you develop the coaches. All coaches, the whole organization preaches giving up and sacrificing for the logo. But the minute the season ends. The logo is going to do whatever the, is best for the logo. And every player is essentially a contractor and every player has to operate in an individual type of manner. And it's mm-hmm. hard because you create such a strong bond, create such a strong bond. It's like when you go to the AFC championship, you make it that far, or you go to the playoffs. Like we, the, you were, yeah, you've been in league since 13. So the year you guys beat us in the wild card in Washington, but the, the, the moment or like after it gets done and you lose in the playoffs, you just think, especially when you're young, like, oh, we'll be back next year. You think it's the same guys, you're having the same conversations. I'm talking to like Deshaun Golson and Jason Hatcher and the guys that were on our defense. Like, hey, what are they saying to you? Because you think we're all kind of working together. Like they're going to work to keep you here. And then when you realize they don't come back or nothing, you're just thinking like, Oh, so are we trying to keep the squad together or not? And then you, because you're so brain, you're just ignorant and naive to it. Yeah. And then when it starts happening, it's like, it's like tough. It's like, damn, like this is how it just changed. Then I go to Tennessee and it's a new group. And you're just like, man, this is just kind of the business that is the NFL. Dude, the biggest shock in the NFL for me was that first cut. At the first, like you're, everyone's in camp. You're sitting there in meetings. Coaches are preaching. We're a family. We're a family. And then like, like week three, because they did two cuts back then. Week three of the preseason, they'd be like, all right, guys, after this game, like, we're going to have to get, it's just the name of the game, it's a business, and you're thinking, like, hey, we're a family, though. Yeah. And you see dudes getting cut in that first cut that you, as a rookie, you don't know, but, like, now looking back, you're like, yeah, obviously that guy had to right. go. But watching dudes just be like, hey, man, good luck. Some dudes are taking it like they've been in the game for a while, so they didn't know, and they, they stab you up and say, hey, we'll see. And there's other dudes that are, like, usually like rookies or, like, second-year guys that are, like, bawling their eyes out. I like, think their dream's over. And it's, like, the most shell shocking. Yeah, experience, bro. Going through that, you're like, my God, watching it and being able to see 100 percent turnover too. It's like, dude, you, it's just watching everybody. See ya, see ya, yeah. see ya. I mean, how many times you seen your locker room turnover? Because I mean, you were at Tennessee for a long time. Yeah, we, dude. I was lucky because after my second year, I think everybody I played with was gone. And in, in the O line room or in the O line room? room? Yeah, damn. in the O line room, and then. Ben Jones came in, then Josh Klein came in, then Jack Conklin got drafted, and then Quentin Spain was un- he was an undrafted guy that came in, and then we, me and Ben especially, we rode together for seven years straight, and that was like Ben and I were like really like the nucleus of that group, and once we like figured out what we wanted our group to be like and how we all meshed, it was like a plug and play situation. Guys would come in and they'd see how things are and they would just gel to it right away. We had people have left and come back or told us like. It was an it was an amazing room. It really was, and that's where you know, I think about you and Aaron. It's like, yeah, you know, it's going to happen, having the changing of the tide and everything, and knowing that a chapter in your life is over. But it's still like when you do look back and you're like, damn, bro, like that was awesome. It was so yeah. fucking good being around those boys. Yeah, I, that's where I go back to. Like, 
me thinking like this is how I have to think. Is it easy? Absolutely not. Do I want to You talk about the brotherhood and like with a team? Like, do I want to be like, dude, like stay. We're homies. We can fucking do this. Right. I, Absolutely. I want to. Absolutely, but yeah. Then I'm also being selfish and trying to think and like, cause I'm being selfish for myself. Cause I know like I'm going to be here anyways. Right. And I could potentially like, I'd never wanted to influence like someone else in their personal life. Right. Because I know that this is a finite time and that's a lifetime. Like when the, I, that really dawned on me, that's where I stopped like, Hey, I'll tell you how emotionally I think. Mm-hmm. But truly like where I weigh more on is this side. And like that, the, this side was more about like you because of how like, I mean, I guess it's kind of philosophical how I started thinking, but like, that's how I wanted it to be. Cause I never wanted the guy to be like, Oh, you said like this now you're going up and leaving. I'm like, well, sorry. You know, if, if I were to like get up and leave, like if I right. wanted to go get trade or something like that, not that I do, but, uh, he does. <laughs> it's, I, I mean, it, it's not like, I, like that'd be fucked up for me to, right. to, to say to someone like, so right. I, that's why I never wanted to do that. I'd never wanted to add into someone as only like just being like, so I wanted to be supportive for Right. For Cause you had, you, you, you're almost forced to compartmentalize and you almost like, you have to. when guys are so emotional and react to something, you're like, oh man, they just, they haven't like, they just don't have that awareness yet of what this business is like. Yeah. How is it for you now? Like you, we talk about, oh, we just had that whole conversation. For you, you've been a, a five-time All-Pro, a three-time Pro Bowler. You've had a roller coaster these last couple of years, especially with injuries and everything else. And now you see headlines of, you know, tackles getting hosted for your success or potential trade talks or should we restructure his contract? There's a lot of like external shit that goes on. How's that been for you coming from, you have five years of like dominance and now all of a sudden you have two, your knee goes out on you. And you've been trying to get back on the field. How is that? How have you been dealing with that? Especially like now that headlines are getting a little, not real, but they're just louder. And you're like, fuck man, they're really, really trying to move on from the boy, at least from the media perspective. So one, if it's fucking tough, like, I'm not going to say it's easy. You know, I think a lot of people like you can relate to this, uh, Taylor, obviously coming from like injuries and stuff is thinking people think like, Oh no, we're good. We're collecting the check. We got all this money. Life's good. It's like, but we didn't get here thinking like that. We didn't like, we love to fucking ball. Mm-hmm. Like we, I didn't ever got paid to chill and not do what I enjoy doing. So when someone's like, Oh, you're getting money. I'm like, yeah, is it nice? Sure. I'm not going to, I'm not going to disc like discredit that side. But what fucking sucks more is like, I'm being stripped of something that I love doing, especially the way I like doing it. And at a certain point though, I think those can come to a head and that can start like, on the question like you know where you at so you talk about like my career like yeah i'm talking about the back nine like i i might be on i might be in the teens of whatever hole i'm on on my back nine mm-hmm. so i mean for me like i've kind of hit more of a fuck it i'm just i'm i'm gonna enjoy it whether i'm on this team if i get traded i haven't fucking cared i'm just like hey i'm enjoying where i'm at it's almost like i'm that young naive kid again when i was drafted because like i don't know what's gonna happen i don't know if i'm gonna make the team but I'm along for the ride and I've had a hell of a fucking journey and I'm going to come in with the blissful fun side that like I wanted to grind and have fun as I'm going to do going out because I'm not going to stress about what I can't control. I try to control so many things up to this point. I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to ride whatever happens. And if that's two weeks, two years, five years, I, cool. When, uh, there's a le- there's a level of like releasing that stress and like want mm-hmm. for control that is extremely freeing. Yeah, you know exactly what you what you're going through. It's it is one of those deals where like when you realize what you can achieve, it's like the only thing is that matters is achieving that thing over and over and over again. Because to do it once, like your first All Pro, your first Pro Bowl, you're like this is sick. But immediately once it's announced, it's like how do I fucking do this again so people know it's not mm-hmm. a fluke? And then you keep fighting, 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 and then all of a sudden some injury happens. And then you, like, I, we had injuries similar times. You were a couple months after me. But we were, like, text therapists. Mm-hmm. Like, we would sit and talk to each other about our knees and what's going on, or, or this and that. voice message therapist. Yes. On your end. You're you a big guy. voice message guy. I do love the voice message. Get it in <laughs> and get it going. But, like, it is one of those things where, like, you fight so hard to get back and then things don't go your way. And then there is a point in time. It's not like a level of defeat where it's like, I can't, I got to stop trying to control it so much because it's making it worse. Mm-hmm. on me mentally and like everything around and me is, is suffering because of it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's a lot to fucking go through, dude. And it's nice to know that you're like in the place you are now. Yeah. I, it definitely was a journey to get here. I didn't like 
immediately in the process. Like it took a lot and I, I didn't even like realize the toll it took on me mentally till after I was already through it. And even like talking with my wife and going back, like, damn, like that wasn't me. Mm-hmm. And like things did change, but I'm like, Oh, this is like, I've been status quo kind of doing my thing. Yeah. Like so I'm saying it fucking sucked. It's hasn't been fun. And like the whole leading up, like in my career, like stress. Yes. And it feels very stressful, Extremely. but rewarding and fun too. Mm-hmm. The one it's just stressful and negative and you're getting stripped of fun. Where does that leave you? And that's where I kind of was. And now I'm like in a point now where it's the relinquishing the control. Cause I, I guess I am a little bit of a control freak, especially, you know, with kinda your body, have to be, you have to. And then to now I'm I, like, I feel freer. I feel better. And even physically, I feel better. I'm like, this is cool. And this is new. Cause this is not a, how I've attacked my career. You know, being a day three, day four guy, you know, trying to show you that kind of what it's like on this end. Yeah, I want to see. Yeah, I have no idea. I need to, I need to learn. Put me on day three, day four game. I don't know. We would love to be day one guys too. But uh, I mean, like, you yeah, know, we just, just grinding just through. Jealous. No, I, I, I've, I've heard you're an absolute grinder. But like, it's like, that's how I've been. And that's how I, I tacked. And it's like, damn, like almost I have to do the opposite. The thing of the antithesis of what I am actually works for me. But it doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Having to surrender to that. That's why I'm like, fuck it, dude. I'm just, can I, can I do what I want to do today? You going to let me need? Cool. Let's do it. You don't want it today? All right, fine. We'll chill. Whereas before it's like, come hell or high water. I'm up early. I'm fucking doing it. Yes. Suck it the fuck up. If it hurts, you're going to hurt through it and you're going to make it feel good while you're doing it. Mm. That's where I'm at. Did you go through a little bit of, and this is me kind of projecting, this question is me projecting onto you a little bit, mm. but wondering when you first get hurt and you tear your ACL that next season or you know, those last couple of games, everybody is like, you're reading the tweets and everyone's like, man, if, if Luan was out here, if, if Bakhtiari was out here, we'd, they, we'd be doing X, Y, and Z. And you're like, thinking yourself, like, damn, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm really him. That be, these people really appreciate me. And then you get into that next season, you were having a lot of ups and downs with the knee and you see that narrative change. It's like this fucking guy, man, can't stay healthy. Like, what's the deal? When are we getting rid of him? And it's like the same people. Mm-hmm. Was that a, an effect on you at all? Because that was for me. Uh, a, a little bit, but like, no, I, I'm I, still I, struggling I, with that. I, I would say a little bit, but I definitely would probably wouldn't say as much. Cause I remember like when I was young, I always would tell my mom, my mom would post like on Facebook. She hasn't graduated out to like Twitter or anything like that. Yeah. But like on Facebook, she's the best. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's been awesome. Yeah. She's in this little bubble, but like she would just post all these good articles about me when I was young, kind of ascending in my career. And I would, I don't know. I, I guess I always kind of being like the, the gritty person who's just been shit on is like, for like, oh, you're too small, this, that, and like, that I've heard in my life. I told her, I'm like, hey, like, the same person that's writing this about me is going to be the same person saying I should be cut. Like, if you're going to post this, I'm cool with you doing that, but then you also got to post the shitty ones. Oh, damn. Like, yeah, I, again, I, I, guess, I guess I got hard on myself, but I remember telling my mom that just to kind of like tempo expectations because like, I didn't have expectations. I'd be where I am in my career today. Like, that, that shit, like, I didn't, I was just like, holy shit, I'm going to make the league. This is fucking great. Like, I don't know how, but the fact that I'm getting in the door, great. So hearing it, like, does it, is, I can definitely relate, but like, I always was like, yeah, this guy, like, I know you're going to come after me at some point. Mm-hmm. It's not a, again, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, like it's, the tides are going to turn. It's going to go from miss, like, oh, you're the missing piece. Oh, it feels really good to, damn, like this piece is fucking hindering us right now. I'm like, yeah. well, I, you know, all right. So like, so be it. Fuck it. <laughs> what, um, <laughs> that's fucking, yeah. That's a good, that's a good thought process yeah. to have. I had did not have that. But again, like, do I like sometimes like stroking my ego when I'm feeling down, like go read a good article or someone's saying about me? Yeah, definitely. I would read mm-hmm. that. And then when I see the shit, I was like, oh, this guy doesn't know fucking shit. Yes. That went on. Yes. Who, where's, where's the other like local be right? Yeah, there you are. That's yeah. what I'm talking Hell about. Like, yeah, dude. Now like, we're on the, the same page. Yeah. Do, does that happen? Yeah. I've totally been through that. But I, I, in the back of my mind, I've never like let that other side of me being like, uh, I'll give you one like pro football focus. I have never, and I will say this, I never liked them. Yeah, but, so, you, but you pay to get good ratings? No. I used to, I remember asking a local beat writer. I was pissed off because I'm like, why is this guy shitting? Like, these people are literally, I, I didn't know at the time how lack of, in, like, lack of influence they had. But I was like, this person's going to cost me my job. They keep talking shit about me. Right. Because, like, that's the only thing I see out there. This was, like, back in, like, 2014. You think everyone else sees it, too. And that's coaches, what I thought, too. I'm like, the, with these grades, like, but I'm like, but my coaches give me these other grades that are different. What, 
like, but everyone else is only seeing this one. And I'm, what am I, am I supposed to just like take a photo and say, like put out oh, there the like, you had oh, after the game, grade. like, yeah. no, here's the, the real grade. Yeah. On the, white, like, the top yeah. right corner. I'm, I'm getting more like, I was like, what, what's going on? Like, again, I think this is very like just naive of me early on. And then, then I really start rolling where it almost became like, I almost feel like pro football focus was like pissed. They're like, fuck, we're going to have to start giving them good grades. And then I remember I'm like, oh, once I started jerking me off, I'm like, well, fuck you guys. You think I'm going to fucking pump you now? So I literally have never liked, tweeted, or ever even given him any credence, I guess, to this day. So congratulations. You guys got me. Fucking I guess until later. this day, we yeah. got what we needed. But right I'm like, here. I sat there. I'm like, what the fuck? And then, then they started jerking me off. They sent me like trophies of like whatever. I'm like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Like, so like I, as like a joke, I put it like in the old line. I'll never bring that shit home. Like best pass blocking off. But like that's the shit that just like pissed me off. I don't know why we got on this tangent about about them, but that was one thing with <laughs> social media. You had something to get off your was, chest. It yeah. affected you. Yeah, yeah. It did, like that one definitely did. Cause I'm like, well, you're fucking shitting on me right now, and I think you're costing me like my goddamn job. And then I'm like at work and it's starting to. I'm looking at this grade. I'm like, okay, so my coach thinking this. So hopefully all right, they're not cool. reading this. And I'm going to work. Everyone's like, dude, you gotta keep it up. Great shit. And I'm like, go home. And everyone's like, like God, we need to draft a tackle. Like get this guy off the team. Like I, he's Marshall Newhouse 2.0. I'm like, whoa, guys, what the fuck? Wild shout out Marshall. Yeah, shout Marshall out to Boy Marshall. Marshall. I, I know it's yeah, fucked up, but that, that, that's, what, Marshall. that's what, I mean, Marshall knows, like, they were fucking ruthless for, at, at anyone's throat at, at left tackle back in, like, the 20, like, 2012, 2011. It was fucked up. Yeah. You can tell it's been a process where you've talked about alluding to that process of just the ups and downs of it all and now getting to this kind of, like, fuck it mentality. But what has, uh, what pissed you off the most during the whole process? What pissed me off the most, like which, like what? So I guess, I guess, uh, so I guess for myself, when I would go through injuries and what would piss me off trying to get back onto the field and everything else throughout the whole process outside of like hearing trips and things like that would always be the, the level of just not on the same page of a person that you might work with off the field versus people you work with in the locker room and in the training room. And some of like, in your head, some of the incompetence, incompetencies you think that the NFL training room can have at times. It would always That's piss me we off because they oh, want to not think we were going there. Yeah, yeah, no, I didn't think that. Was I'm talking question. about like, you know, when I, when I was like going through it or trying to recover from injuries and everything else, you just wish everybody would be on the same page. And you're like, man, it seems like, it seems like so-and-so is looking out for my best interest, but why are they kind of forcing to push my hand to like go out on the field right now a little too soon? So that would always piss me off. So I'm kind of just asking you, that might not be it, but I'm asking you like, what's kind of, what, what pissed you off the most throughout the process of coming back? And throughout these last couple of years. I think what we said before, like the lack of control, like that, that fucking pissed me off. I think every other injury I've had, which again, hasn't gone like, even like documenter has to be out there. Cause I didn't feel like it needed to, like I just grip my teeth harder and just say, fuck it. I'll do it later. And they would just kind of go away. Kind of just fit in line. Like if I ignore you enough or just tell you that, no, you can't be hurt. Mm -hmm. You can do it. Whereas like this knee thing. And I, I like that we can kind of relate to this. Like we can mm. drink some maybe whistle pig and talk more about it. I'm sure we got plenty of, yes, you know, sir. Gonna, yeah. Free plug, baby. Uh, it, the most annoying thing about it is like, I, I can't like, I have to listen to it. It won't let me do the, what I've done my entire life. And that I think is the most stressful part. Now the whole training room and like, who's doing what, like, Hey man, like that's, I think that's a whole nother basket. Uh, that we, yeah. the problem is is information when it comes to what will what you're talking about yeah. is because you go and you meet with these third parties and they put so much game on you about they're using big words they do a couple things and they're like just do this this and this right now and you do it and you're like oh fuck I do feel better when you do mm -hmm. that and then you go to the the uh, the training room and they're like they they stick to the the nuts and bolts of what's going on they got a new machine for everything but you're still doing rice you're still you know what I'm saying. And so it, you, it does. You're still doing rice. <laughs> yeah. It's still like, yeah, like it makes you think like, Hey, who is right and who is wrong. And then usually like, as you get farther down the road, the road, you start working with these third party people and you're like, well, man, every time I work with them, I feel way better. Why is that different than when I'm in the training room? What, like, why is that causing that frustration? And then, I mean, you saw me in what, 2021 with Adrian in the training room. Yeah. He was this, this one of the trainers we had, he was making me do some stuff and I fucking lost it on him one day. I just felt like he was doing it wrong. And everyone else is telling me he's doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. But he's like, no, this is the only way to do it. And it's just, that is a, a frustrating thing to go back on yeah. like, the things you struggled with, dude, because that shit is. Yeah, it's like, it's like you work and you're trying to like, you know, 
make your injury feel a lot better. I had this thing called like osteitis pubis where my groin was just inflamed. And I had basically had this set up for like two weeks in training camp. And the third part of that I would work with, the guy that I would work with that would fly in, we go to his hotel room and everything else. And we're doing all these things to make, to relieve some pain and do all this. And he, the big thing was like, hey, don't get on a bike or anything else. But the first thing I'd do when I'd go into the tr uh, training camp the next day would be I'd get on a fucking bike. And you're just like, yo, are these motherfuckers like actually trying to figure out what's wrong with me? Or are they just going through the motions? So all, all to say like those types of things would piss me off. And now for me, I'm more on the, I'm like, I'm pretty, I, I am on the other side of it. So I can kind of talk a little shit about it. I do feel like there's incompetencies in the NFL when it comes to that stuff. Like the reason no players go back and train all year round at their facilities is because the, the facilities and the programs usually suck. Um, I know it's kind of harder for usually. you guys to speak on it. This is, you, I, this is Will's NFLPA. I, my NFLPA? Yeah. No, I'm just saying, like, speaking openly about that stuff, like, uh, the NFLPA did come out with grades and everything else for all that it's stuff, which I thought phenomenal. was phenomenal. Yeah, I thought that was awesome. It kind of gives an, an insight to what goes on. Uh, yeah, it's awful. First of all, I, I actually will respectfully dis disagree. Are they bad? I don't even, even go bad. I love JC. Like, oh, I think JC's awesome. So, yes, the, like, did, did we have gripe before? Because, again, let me also. He sucks. Yeah, he's awesome. I know. I know. I mess with JC Treader. He's a hardworking, yeah. well-spoken, good dude. I was with him at Exos and Carlsbad all the time. That guy is an elite person, human being. He's gonna. So I was drafted with him in Green Bay, and like I think so. He went to Cornell. I believe he studied like a union. Yeah, it was in because when he got when like he got you, voted as a president, it was kind of like a no-brainer when he gave his made speech. for this job. Yeah, and like I remember him telling me, he goes. The worst thing the NFL did, could have done was blackball me because I'm the president and now they just gave me more time to fuck them over. I heard this and like I know JC. JC's a very fair guy. Like he's going to call a spade a spade, mm -hmm. even if it means a detriment to himself. I'm like, that's an honest man. Like I would love to play any type of card game with him because I know he will never cheat. He'll never cheat in anything. He'll, he'll be a guy like if you even drop money, he'd be like, he just would, he's that kind of guy. Yeah. Like he's always like, I got the coach watching. Sometime we get annoyed because we're like, you know, back when we would play. Uh, we get out of meetings when we were rookies and be like, oh, uh, we, this is how we talk. We do. Uh, we got to go back to the uh, offensive line. I'm like, no, we fucking don't. If we all don't go, we're going to be good. <laughs> well, the, the monitor said so. I'm like, God damn it, JC. Yeah. Then we had to fucking go in the meetings. I've getting that extra. Like that's, yeah, he was one of those guys. But, yeah. but I respect him now in his position. And that's the, been the code of who he's been. So these grades, going back to the grades and him, like I think he is actually doing well. And the nice thing, being as close as I am with him, being drafted with him is I got like a fast pass to, know what's going on what's he thinking what's he doing and i think that he's actually using the money for good for positive change and he's got a vision of what he wants to do like that nfl pa thing mm. uh the golfing thing like there is a vision behind it. it's not just let's get the guys going in golf i don't want to like divulge too much of like mm. his plan but there's a plan behind it when you're saying use the money for good can you say anything about that i i think for us like we would always call the question like we're paying these dues and like what's it going for what are we really getting and like did we really feel like it was being used in our best interest the mm. fiduciary duty that's where we call the question i think that's where you say no like that's i think that's where you have that resentment and i think over the course of our career i think a lot of guys felt that same way yeah i like where it's heading because you have a guy in the room that i know like i said he'd be the guy who found money on the ground he'd hand it back to you so i know that he's looking at this money and be like well this is a waste of money why is this money going here it should be going towards this and he'd fight for Use this money for something that's actually do that's gonna do good not only for the PA but for the play well, for the players and then the PA. Mm -hmm. And if it isn't, let's put a kibosh to this thing right now. Like what do we so I I've trust I have trust in JC. Yeah. Like so that's what makes me feel really good. And so far the things that he's doing, like the Twitter blast with the uh, fields, um with the grades, like I thought that was a great first step. And then I think it showed all these players like Fuck, I got some, you know, these, uh, these strength coaches and these, uh, uh, these, these training people better fucking start getting their shit right now. Cause they're going to be on the hot seat. Cause I got a great coming for you at the end of the year. Whereas before right. everyone used to be super taboo. You don't talk about what goes on in the facility and you know, they're in with whether it's head coaches, uh, front yeah. office ownership, stuff like that. You just realize they're kind of like, you can't really mess with them because they're kind of setting their job. Now that this stuff was public, it's like people can have a bird's eye view on mm -hmm. how each element in the building is working. Like, man, it seems like our players really don't like this strength coach or really don't like the nutrition or the building or this person or that person. And you can kind of check and have that 
open dialogue on getting better. Like, Hey, what changes are we making? Are you stuck in your ways? Why are you getting this grade? Why do, why collectively do the players feel about you in this way? Wasn't the Ravens like the Ravens hadn't had the worst strength coach and everyone's extremely outspoken. But I think two weeks before, like a 10 days before that thing came out, they fired him because the, I, this is again, I don't know a hundred percent. What, what, I, what, what, theory. Yeah, yeah. What, what I had heard was they fired him because they knew this was going to come out and it was going to look bad on the organization. What? And then that goes back. Which hey, brother, a, we got some power now. Right. Yeah. That, uh, what I think is awesome. And I think for all of us, we can all, all agree that like we know the players have power. The hardest thing is getting us to get together. Mm-hmm. All of us are all over the fucking place and it's sad. But I see JC pulling us together. Even like, you know, Am I really talking to him? Is he like there? No, but like with these things, I feel like we're being able to have one collective voice and that is very strong, especially when it comes to negotiation, especially yeah. if we're getting for what you want. So that's where I feel about that with JC. JC wants day. to come on. Yeah. Taylor went on a little tangent a few episodes ago and JC immediately puts us in a group. He said, hey, I want to come on the bus. See? That's a little yeah. different than when we had the uh, other PA presence. I do like, I like I've said, I like JC. I'm nervous about him coming on the bus. Why is that? Because he's such a he's such a well spoken and he's much more well versed in everything we're going to talk about than I am. So I am going to look dumb. He, and the reason why I know I'm going to look dumb is I don't feel like looking into it so much where I can like literally have an actual debate with this individual. Yeah. And also, I know my <laughs> hatred and uh, dismay for the NFLPA is from an individual standpoint. 2019, uh, getting a PED, knowing I didn't take that PED. And essentially, I get on a call with them. They're like, there's nothing we can do for you. And my thought is, is like, why in this judicial system of the NFL am I guilty before proven innocent? And then if I am proven innocent, still guilty. So that put a massive, like, I, I got very frustrated. I lost a lot of money, but I also lost a lot of respect around, around the community. You're jaded, yeah. People, I'm extremely jaded from that situation. And then going into meetings, like you have those three, four meetings every year with the NFLPA, and it's like, you sit there, guys are asking good questions. Guys are asking questions about money, what we should do, where we should go, what's going to happen. And the, there was never a clear cut black and white answer. It was always a gray area. We're working on this. Trust me, guys, we, this is going to happen. And it was never like, nothing ever got done. It was like an hour of dudes just bitching at the PA guys and them going, hey, but we're, do, we're working for you. Hmm. You guys should come to the meetings, which you were on me all the time about going to the meetings. But it's like, I have really drawn a line in the sand with the NFL PA from, What's happened to me individually, which now, is which is which is justifiable. Like that's understandable. I yeah. think it's like I mean, I, I, because of the PED thing, I lost four million dollars. Yeah, well, yeah, you like, know, yeah, I, I get that. Yeah, I'd be pretty that's jaded. A, I, yeah, I'd yeah, be pretty fucking and jaded. The thing that frustrated me the most is like when I'm when if I'm in a situation where I need to go to battle, essentially, I'm gonna go into battle with the lawyers of the NFL. These dudes are paid so much money, and I'm frustrated. I want the people working with me to at least seem just as frustrated as I am, just as angry and motivated they could be fucking lying to me for all i care but as long as i feel that from you i'm like all right i feel like whatever happens they're doing the best we're in this together yeah i get on a call with them and it's like hey man you know based on the way this is all set up you know you literally have to go through old supplement cans and get them tested and i can go into a whole thing about how supplements are made batches and all that and it's kind of just one thing after another a lot of numbers there's nothing's regulated Mm -hmm. there's like even if you have nsf certified like that's that's you know, sometimes shit can still get in there. So they really just sat there and they were waving the white flag on our first conversation. It was just so frustrating, dude. And I remember getting on the call with the NFL and the PA and there was like basically my sentencing of what's going to happen. I'm sitting in the, um, the kitchen and I knew there's nothing I can say here anymore to not get suspended. So I took my 25, 30 seconds to tell, I was literally like, you guys are pieces of shit. Fuck you guys. Like went off and then hung up the phone. I like went off for a I while. I love that. And love since that. then I've had that, I've had that, that chip on my shoulder. And it's like, I would love to have JC on because of how much respect I have for JC. But I know good and well, when we sit down and have that conversation, I'm going to walk away feeling dumb. You know, <laughs> well, I, I think, I think the reason <laughs> he I, wants- I think that's a good thing. I don't want to run away from that. But at the same time, it's like, I'm very aware that it's going to happen. Wouldn't you rather have a PA president make you feel dumb yes. and make you feel really smart? Absolutely. Especially because they're privy to the, they're at certain tables, conversations, and planning. I'd rather have him be like, damn, I never thought of that, instead of, yeah. what the fuck are you thinking? And it's these other, you, you these other clowns, like these regional dudes that come in, they, dude, they piss me off. Who's the one guy? You, that I, I don't know, is it Ernie? 
Oh yeah, I don't like Ernie at all. <laughs> Ernie's yeah, yeah, I, like, I, look, I, I, under, I understand. It's very justified. Like Ernie, he, and then who's the guy? Who is who's the black dude? Bald head. Um, uh, Don Davis. Yeah, fuck that guy too. <laughs> I, I, the, I think those guys, you're really good with names, man. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, every, I, single time, like, every single time I've had a conversation with them, and I'll, they've I'll say me, something when I get a moment. Well, I'm just I'm also like finishing this. No, go, go also, off, I just needed a couple things. When these motherfuckers come up to me and we're having these conversations, there's never a clear answer. Never a clear answer. Well, I'm asking you questions that are very basic and you could just give me the answer to. The 401k, phenomenal. Other than that, what the fuck are we doing? Like, what is happening here? Why? Like, I have no idea and they've never given me a clear answer. I, th I think they're just... I think they're just cutting checks just to cut checks. I think this is the one, and I know you want to talk about it. The well, only, yeah, way, way, yeah. 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 I'm, the only I'm, thing I, I can well, say once to I that, said that, I'm like, oh, let me just sit I, here and listen. I've had questions I've gone to them for, and my only thing, again, I've never gone down the alleys you've been down, Yeah. but I just know from them, their whole idea is we cannot confirm anything that has any little drop of gray because now we are deemed liable. Because the moment they give yeah, you clarity, time. exactly, and and th and that's the bullshit. So like, yeah, I, that that's the only thing I can think of. Because that's like for them, it's like I've been there. I was like, give me a fucking answer. Just tell me yes or no. And they're like, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, you know, we just recommend that right. you know, for from a supplement standpoint, like we recommend that uh, no player takes any supplement. The moment they put anything in their body, they are subject to potentially t like having a tainted substance. I'm like, right. so you're telling me I can't eat fucking broccoli from fucking. Uh, uh, if I go to Publix and get broccoli because it right. could be potentially tainted and it's not organic, it's really responsible for it. So I'm just like, it, that, that, that's that, that's it's the point. Like, your, it's all cover your it, ass. It's talk. fucking stupid. Yeah. And like, it should be like, that is a terrible way to go about it, especially for the players you're representing us. Give us more cut and dry, more black and white because it's our careers, it's our money. But like, then again, you strip that away. It's like, and I try to go on their side and like, look, I'm like, okay, I see what you're doing. It's fucking like, I hate it, but all right. And the supplement thing, dude, it's completely asinine for people to sit there and be like, you don't need to take any supplements. Just get good <laughs> night's rest and eat nutrition. Like, brother, You're buying we, are, the we are putting out so much energy and damaging our bodies so much on a day-to-day -day basis during football. You need supplements. They're extremely important mm -hmm. to take. Mm -hmm. You need the, the basics, the fish oils, the B, the, the B vitamins, the, the vitamin D, like, take those. But guess what? You're still fucking liable. Mm -hmm. And it's just wild. And if that is the case, why don't we have every guy get blood work and every single guy have supplements that the team buys and make sure it's good and then we take those. Right. Because then they're like, like make it anything outside of it, then we're liable. Like, how is that not an easy answer? Because the money. But how can they, how can they confirm that you're taking it a, anything else? Making it a part well, of no, a conversation. No, if, they, if you do your blood work and they say, based on your blood work, what your levels are in X, Y, and Z, you need this much of vitamin C. You need no, this I, much I know vitamin that part, D. but then like they give you the supplements and then like, okay, but then let's say you still pop. Then what? They confirm that you took something that the, the, then, that the then, franchise didn't give you? Then it's like, okay, what if we've done your blood work and we've given you all the things we know you need, then why would you need to take anything else outside of here? Even creatines, even proteins, all, all that stuff. Like well, if, you, one, if you give me all the stuff I need and I take it, and then I go off and do something else. I should be liable for what I do uh, if I'm getting everything I need. I totally agree with that. And for one, that that that's what's around the corner. Yeah. I think I would love. I actually yearn for the day for that. Yeah. Because I think it's like it's. Jump in. I know. I, 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 I thought that too. But, when you read the supplements, I was like, I gotta fuck. No, I know, but I, but I I totally agree with that. And like I do the blood work thing too. I've been going down the alley and I fucking love it. I'm like, what the fuck? Why don't our teams just like you invest so much money in these players? Optimize them. Get right. the most you can out of them. Make sure that they're healthy, they're recovering, they can show up on Sunday. There's so many guys who don't know shit that literally have never had protein besides muscle milk that they were given through college and then they never had a supplement before in their entire life until they get to the NFL and then it's like, oh, go fend for yourself. Like, we just had a rookie pop because his, uh, what do you went to a JC and his buddy's like, dude, we got big, taking this, take this. It's like, like, could, yeah. and, and they love, the end of, like, teams love micromanaging. That's a great one to do. But they don't know who to trust, who to go through, how much money is it going to be? Oh, you know what? Like, is it, t it tested? Oh, did it not come from like one of the guys that already works here? Then they're going to get jaded. Then they want to have control over it. So then they shoot it down. They say it's a, it's stupid because they don't want to like have their job come to compromise. And it's just, it's a whole racket. But I totally like, I would love that. I, I do that myself. I, all the shit you're saying. We just got yeah. blood work done two weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. I'm literally going like today. You talk about scheduling. That's where I'm going to see in Franklin. I'm going to go see my, like the blood guy and make sure everything's level. Cause since I doing that, my body has been way better. I wish I was doing this when I was younger. Again, I had no fucking idea. I was like you. I was taking 
here's the thing. I remember taking a protein supplement and then literally I got an email after taking for a good like 12 months, 18 months. And it said, hey, recall, tainted supplement. No. And I'm sitting there it's like, the it was list. like organic gra- grass fed. I was getting it from overseas and I was like, ooh, Went shit. Overseas, I'm no? like, well, I was fucking, I've been tested and, I've, so and it's been clean so far. And I'm like, you know, damn, I could have gotten fucked. Mm. And I didn't, for me, I'm like, I'm paying top dollar for like a grass fed protein that's coming from, well, I don't even remember where the hell, I think my dad told me about it. it was like, cause he's always like been health conscious, but that's something like I could have easily been one of those stories too. And I wouldn't fucking pissed. I'm like, I brought this in. It was literally sitting in our facility. Like our, no one, you know, this is before NSF became a big thing. Right. Was, they have the app where you could do like, you do the barcode. This is, that's this is, when yeah. NSF yeah. first came in, right? This, this is before that. I, yeah, I, I but you would still take like even the non NSF stuff. You could hold up a bottle, scan it and it would be like green, yellow, or oh, red. Yeah. I mean, nowadays, honestly, like, this is, I don't know if you guys want to have this, it'd be cool enough. Like, I don't, I don't really take much stuff anymore. Like, I literally take, like, the, the vitamins that I, the blood guy has mm-hmm. told me to do from, like, Thorn. I'm like, okay, that's all NSF. And then I like, barely drink protein shit. I just eat it at this point. Like, that's what I'm saying. I'm out of such a fuck it. Like, you know what? My body's just going to hold on to what it is. And if it's not, yeah, like, just organic, natural supplement what I can from the vitamin standpoint, let it go. Like, enough of that creatine, like, that talk. I did all that stuff. I, that, that's, that's where I'm at now. You're, lo- I, I you're losing better. the meathead. You're I, losing I the meathead right meathead. now. I am. It's a scary thought. I am. It's, it is sad, but... But it seems like you want to just get back to the basics. It, it, it is. I, I think... I do think getting back to the basics. I think we've... It's a different philosophy. Like, I think my body now has actually held weight better. I used to always be struggling to be heavy. Now I'm like, fuck. I'm trying to lose a little bit of weight. And it's still kind of hanging there a little bit longer. I'm not taking a single fucking... Uh, hey, equally a shake. scary thought. Yeah, that's that's also scary. As I'm a like, dude who is also like always, always heavy, mm-hmm. or no, I'm sorry, always light, trying to become heavy, you would think, man. But someday when I'm done playing, this is gonna be awesome. Gonna I'll drop weight fall. like that. Yeah, and that, that that'd be a scary thought if you're like, man, I'm kind of eating the same, but nothing's really fluctuating. No, dude, like, I've what's been the problem. I've here? been eating quinoa and grass fed meat for literally three weeks straight on this cleanse, and I'm like, how am I barely losing weight? Because I mm-hmm. old me would be plummeting. Yeah. I'd be in like the two nineties ASAP and I'm sitting here just still hovering. I'm like, can we, like, I want to, I want to get that low, right? Mm-hmm. Now. Fucking am. I'm like, well, just keep sticking to it. I guess age. I don't know. Fuck. How, how do you, uh, close. this, I, do you remember what you were going to say? Yeah. That, that was, I think ultimately I was just going to say like, uh, like I, I completely, like, that's all justifiable and understandable, like feeling jaded. Like when the year 10 stuff was going on, like, yeah, it's kind of like water off my back. Well, I, was I actually, so serious to where it was going to piss me off. Like, yes and no, because, you know, you still lose out on, like, when I couldn't sign that deal, it's like, you still lose out on over $300,000 that I could have had in the bank account. And it pisses you off that there's some, there's really a cover your ass conversation about it. It wasn't necessarily, hey, this is where the NFL could get you in the, the gambling or the structuring. It's like, we don't think nothing will happen, but also we can't guarantee it. So that ultimately led to not playing, not playing. But I think like with the whole NFL, NFL PA thing and, and JC coming on the bus and everything like that, you have such a microphone because you are a premier, like you signed the biggest deal at one point in time. And when something happens and you just feel jaded and you're like, fuck the PA and everything like that versus a stance of like, let's figure out how we can fix the system, which I know it's like JC, he's trying to do things like that. Um, I think that's where, I think that's where it's like, you want to come in. If we're going to, if the NFL PA, we, we need to be a union that's about the boys, that has the player's best interest in mind and everything about that. And we want to make it that way. I think that's why it's imperative for guys to show up, go to the meetings, do all that stuff versus, you know, I, I, you have your thing and it is justifiable. No, And everything you're saying is a good point. Right. And it's such a, it, it's like an individual jaded thing to where you're just like, no, fuck the PA. I'm drawing the line in the sand. Right. Like I said here, I'm like, man, we got to figure out a way to get him to come around because if you have the strongest voices coming out and taking it serious you can start to make a little bit of change something small uh you had to at first get like practice squad players didn't get eligible for benefits mm-hmm. and i went to the meetings like after the second or third year lorenzo alexander 15 year player made awesome the pro guy. bowl stud he was a he was a practice squad guy yeah. for three years before he started playing in the game and um i was always pissed because you could be a undra- you could be a rookie who was gonna get cut but you got hurt and you got put on IR. You got like double the money of P-Squad guys, guys who are still playing. Like I would see guys that I knew were going to be gone. 
And I'm sitting there fucking grinding on practice squad. Yeah. And they got access to the benefits, the 401k, the retirement, double the money that I was getting. And you just felt the type of way to where it's like, well, how do we make a change or make a, make some kind of rule? But fortunately, when you go, when you're at the meetings and you can try and do some of that focus work, Lorenzo ends up getting something passed where you can either credit a year or practice squad players can now have, can now have access to benefits. But all to say is JC being the president, trying to make all these changes somebody you can trust it's like there are some suits and people we need to weed out that don't necessarily have the best the interest yeah to where you and when you say i just want to feel like it seems like somebody has some urgency to this because again going off the example with the year 10 stuff it always felt like i talked to somebody at 11 in the morning and they're like they're going to talk with the lawyer the first thing tomorrow morning it's like why we have hours today like i can be signed and going out there and doing this if somebody if i just felt like somebody was trying to fight the good fight and figure it out for me which I, I agree with all that stuff. It's it's just a, it's the dude, fuck the PA in this. I'm like, I just wish he would come around a little bit because you have a strong voice. Yeah. And, and I, we have a pod that's about the boys for the boys. And we want the grades. We want the union. We want the players to be in the best possible position to battle against the ownership and yeah. things like that. Best and way, we obviously need to fix those yeah. flaws in the system. I would say stop paying your dues is the best way to put yourself in the best position. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. When when all this you won't be jaded if you get if they cut your check for four million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Four million dollars. Yeah, four million, right? Water under the bridge. Yeah. You, 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 you and Megatron, dude. Like yes. if Detroit pays me the money that they uh, that they owed me, if you get your money from the PA, he'll be back at, like in Detroit yeah. singing their praises. I'll be I'll be waving that fucking flag. <laughs> dude, no, you you bring up a good point. Like, hey, you get in it more, do more stuff, like try to be a part of it. They did the same thing to me. Like, hey, you want change? Go make it yourself. And I. And then it kind of goes back to being so solely focused on your career when everything's going well. At that point in my career, everything was going exactly how I wanted it to go. And I thought to myself, why? Like, just eat this, hate them, and limit distractions and focus on where you need to go with your career. That was, the, you know, because it's like, I've always worked best if I just simplify things. And that was easy for me to simplify, compartmentalize, and be like, okay, move on from that. That's gone. I can't, you can't do anything about it. It's not worth my time. I have a young kid. I think Taylor was pregnant with Willow at the time. Yep. So it was all like, why would I go and add more to my plate when I can just focus on this? And in my head, be like, you can make that four million up at the back end. Just keep fucking, just keep focusing. Now, obviously, injuries start happening and stuff that's like that. That's great. That's an unbelievable way to think too. Yeah. Like to compartmentalize and then just yeah. think like that in the moment. Because I will say, go back in my memory, I did come back from that. Mm. I do remember watching a couple of clips and a couple of games of you. You can even pull them up. You can see. I remember you were on a little terror when you came back. About, I appreciate that. I dude. do remember. 2019 that. was a good year. I, I was going to say, I do remember when you came back. I'm like this. Like you say fresh legs, this, that, the other. But there is a difference between having fresh legs. And then then there's that kind of like, fuck everyone. I'm going to show everyone type thing. The yeah. compartmentalizing that I did see. Like, I do remember watching. I was like, oh. dude, I appreciate you saying that. Because I think about my <laughs> fucking dude. Hey, you fucking, uh, that fucking fire. Yeah, yeah, that fire. fire. Oh. I, uh, I, when I look back at like my film, if I, well, I don't really look like my film, but I like when I think back about my film, like 2019 and 2020 were like my best put together games I've ever played. And it was such a, I was in flow state for a while. Mm -hmm. It was an angry flow state mm -hmm. and it was, it was rolling, man. But yeah, 2019 that missed those first four games. And then the, I only played five games in 2020, but I legit thought to myself, like, I'm really just, I'm, I'm peaking. Like I'm You're really five and oh. <laughs> Five and zero, and bro, I was falling. I was really going out there, and I, I do appreciate you saying that because I think about that sometimes. And I'm like, I don't, I can't go out and say that myself. Like it's just like then it's like you're trying to. What are you trying to justify? Bro, that, hey, that's what the brother is here for. I, you know what I'm saying? Up. That's why I got so fired up like, when you said I, it. I mean, like in my like, heart, yeah. I was like, damn, thank Cause, you. Because because when you when you're talking about the moment, I mean, I was thinking, I'm like, I do remember looking at film. Like, you know, that was that same fucking time. Because I'm like, he didn't come back from injury then. This was when you just came back from something. I'm like, oh, it was the fucking that. Yeah, that and I was remember watching because we. We're playing some like my teams are watching like, oh. like I said, there's a difference in having like the fresh legs going out there playing because sometimes fresh legs also equals a little bit of rust and over excitement. Yeah. There was like that, like you said, right? Flow state, like you had the proper lean and smoking dudes off the ball. And you've always been an unbelievable run blocker, especially for being a left tackle too, which again, you can get the whole debate, but like just purely tackle. I'm not going to put you in a box. Tackle standpoint, mowing dudes off the ball, not being like too far over your, over your toes versus like you just were very balanced. And not just like from a flow state, as you like to call it, but also just like a, when you're out in the field, you know the difference. Like when you get back in training camp, the first couple reps you do, 
oh fuck like, I, like hey am i ever gonna be the same like you know, what's you're happening? Just, yeah. like you know you do a kick set and then the guy hits you on a bull rush and there's a quick move off it's like oh, i had too much weight forward or the guy bull rush you and you're on your heels and then you're fucking back it's like okay i had too much my weight back when you go look at the film it takes a little bit to get mm. like that proper weight distribution i just remember like seeing like oh yeah this guy I, I remember that. And you brought up a good point too of like when you get in a training camp and there's that, is that rust? When you're in your first couple of years, you're literally thinking to yourself, oh no, like, I can't do this. Like it's, and then as you get older, you're like, then you start to realize that the little tiny details you're not doing correctly and you can kind of fix those. Like, okay, tomorrow's going to be better. Make sure you don't do X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z. Just focus on like those two little things. Yeah. No. But I appreciate you saying that. That was, it was a tough time. It was definitely a tough time. It was an angry time. Not so angry anymore. Um, you got it off your chest now, so. I got it off my chest, but I do like all that. All this conversation to say is JC being on this bus would be awesome to have him on. And it'd probably be very beneficial for me as well. Yeah. And I think it'd be good for him to be on just because, you know, you get clips from it. There's NFL guys that see stuff yeah. on, our, on our brand and things like that. And you can kind of get it out there. Yeah, getting JC out there, honestly, would be really good. Cause JC, he's like I said, I, I, I fully trust him until proven otherwise at mm -hmm. this point. And so far he's, like the last thing I was talking to him, he's working up something that's gonna, I think, come out in the next like week or two. And I'm like, dude, this like this is what I'm fucking talking about. Yeah. Like this is what I want a PA president. Like yeah. you don't even know. And then I like I call him for something else, and then he's like, Oh yeah, I got this thing coming out next week. I'm like, that's the fuck I'm talking about. In JC, that, that, that's why I like dude. the grades. Like the grade thing, it put people on notice. Granted, do I think some some guys may have just been like, oh yeah, fuck, let's just get through this thing. And then other people were trying to grade as it was, but it put people on notice and then also gave put the organization and the people within the organization that have their jobs that are like kind of like, like you say, cut the weeds a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, organizations that kind of put them on notice. But also then I think it gave some of the players power. Like we said, when you go in the training room, like, Oh, you're just going to take care of the big name guys and then take the guys. Oh, you know, I've heard, uh, I've, I've, I've heard a, a, a trainer. I'm not going to say who, and I'm not going to say if he's there or not anymore, but I've heard him say like, Oh, like, why do you need me to do this? So you're going to be gone in a couple of weeks. Like, I was to like, their face. Ooh, fuck yeah. Wow. Dude. I'm like, that's, that's fucked up. But yeah. na now it's nice to hear, like hear and see like, yo, you can say that. I'm not saying you can't, hmm. but for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction now. And we're starting to see, Hey, we have our equal and opposite reaction. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a grade that's going to come out. And, and that person you said it to, they're going to probably think about that when they're put that grade in. Yeah. And whether or not it, it, there's a lot of gray in all the grades or not, it was, it was such a, moment when it was all coming out and players are kind of speaking on it that next year it'll be that much better that's what i'm saying like guys are probably gonna care a little more and the next thing you know it's gonna be a super like dialed in like it's a it's the first iteration of it like yeah like any anytime it's the beginning like and two like there's front office people and ownership and leadership groups in the organizations that that probably do care and that just helps give them perspective to move the move the product forward because ultimately you're paying all your dollars to these individual contractors players that are going to make your product on the field. You want to give them as many resources as possible. <clears throat> it's like, yo, if they don't like this training room or this facility or this, you know, staff member, they're able to like make an adjustment. Well, think about what like, a, a, like let's, I'll just use a strength coach. Like I, I do, I love our strength coaches. That's why I'm going to use uh, them as an example. Like they could be like, oh, we got the best program. We have the uh, best facility. These guys love it and they do it. And again, who's reporting that to the person in control of, you know, employing those people for their job and making sure that that, that mm -hmm. room has the equipment necessary for their players. So are they going to curate it more for them? There's definitely a bias in that. So then they're like, oh no, we're good because I'm the source I'm getting it from is telling me so. Well, now you have a secondary avenue. It's like, well, he's telling me it's good. He's telling me it's shit. And the players are saying it's shit and they have a terrible grade on it. Now it may make that person think more. And that's, that is the first greatest step you can do is make them actually think. It's like, Maybe they are trying. Maybe they are lying. Maybe this yeah. isn't the best source I'm getting from. Maybe mm -hmm. you know, like the training room, like, oh, we have the best rehab stuff. This is exactly what we need. The guys keep getting hurt. And now they're curing sets, but now the players saying like, this fucking sucks. So now it, 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 I think it just falls to question more. And I love that because with, you know, uh, uh, anytime there's anything that oppose each other, like, like the the cream always rises to the top. You're like when you have a battle, it's gonna raise the standard of room and that's that's i love that about that situation and it opens dialogue and that's why i it's love interesting that interesting to see um growth mindset between the nfl and college programs because we've had the opportunity to go to a lot of different college programs yeah you've been the traveling facility, yeah we've been moving brother the facilities in college way nicer like day and night nicer okay you, can you can you tell me like what they look like now like i didn't have a great like colorado wasn't like the 
like a top five like uh, from a uh, facility standpoint. But yeah. like what like what what do they what do they have Still now? Is it? I'll let you know. Are you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 go, I'm going back to the spring game, but You're like on it. I, I've heard they have some. When's the nice spring game? Uh, the twenty oh, the twentieth. Like that's not late. Yeah, that, I felt. Like, we'll yeah, be back. we'll be out there. This, this episode comes out Tuesday. We'll be out there Wednesday. You guys don't want to go out there on April twentieth. No, uh, no, we do all. We we do. Thank you. I'm 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 waiting for them to kind of get four twenty. No, um, yeah, that does. Yeah. Boulder. I forgot about that. Yeah, sounds like a good time. Yeah, but we do all of our travel like on Wednesday. Get back Thursday, so that way we're gone in the week. I mean, you know, with a kid, like you're trying to structure it to where True. you're home on the weekends, and even four twenty. That's uh, that's my man's anniversary. Yeah, so they'll be going on a little you got, trip. You got married on four twenty? Yeah, because we literally because we thought that God, was what funny. Is these, dude. Hell yeah, yeah, dude. You're noticing the game. Right now. <laughs> Um, this right here, yeah, we were just at LSU this past week. Oh man, the facilities are stupid. stupid, dude. They have like doors you walk up to and they just slide open. Their locker room, they have like lay dude, down their locker, locker rooms. rooms. Insane, <laughs> insane, bro. Insane. You walk in, they have all the trophies, and you go off to the left, and it, the doors open. Or you have magically like Star Wars. You go lay down in these chairs. They put these like hype videos up for you to watch for recruits. They do. They're a top of the line facility. Look at that locker room. Yeah, it's what incredible. The, those look like. First class seats in like one of like the biggest. Yes, like, that's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. Yes, in like an air, like one of those nice airplanes. But you go in, you go in. There's literally a guy in the corner. His his uh, office is just filled with bats. He started um, Marucci. Marucci bats. You can tell the dude is an analytics yeah. data guy. He's talking about analytics, how guys like what we're looking for is like you look at all the top guys and what they all possess. What's the common denominator with them, and that's who they're looking for. Like they are just fucking dialed in over there ahead of the game we talked to brian kelly brian kelly had only could only do 15 minutes because he had to go and go to the sports science thing because they're trying to make sure their guys are like on like doing all their shit the right way it's really really incredible and the cool and the cool thing about coach kelly which is the best part of it he's like you know the sports science thing like it's a good vessel and it's a good tool for everybody it's not the end all be all but he's like it's important to have these meetings so everybody in all these different departments are speaking the same language. It's not the training room's doing their own thing. The weight room's doing their own thing. Some of the strength coaches might have ways for you to rehab versus the training room or any of the mental coaches that they that they have and mm -hmm. and uh, it's compensate to bring them on board. Like he wants everybody speaking the same language, so that way there's no discrepancies in the product, which is I think is that's the best part of it. That's yeah. that's what that's a lot of stuff that happens with us in the NFL and probably a lot of colleges too. Now, no, dude, I I, th I think so many people like think the NFL is like the pinnacle, the cream, like the cream of the crop that they have everything like done to a T. Like sometimes it's a there. It's like chickens with their head cut off running around. I don't think people understand that from an organizational yeah. standpoint, there's times even on the football field, like at least for me, like I've been in a situation where like, I've literally seen Aaron drop like backyard plays. I'm like this in the most pinnacle moment where people are like, Oh, this is where you go to your go-to play. Aaron will be like, Hey man, like, what do you, would you like running against that guy? Okay, you do that, do this, and then next thing you know, like everyone's left and like we're lying standing there. We got like probably twelve seconds on the clock because Aaron loves burning every fucking second of the game clock. And we're like, so what kind of protection you want, dude? Uh, just I don't know, like, like two jet or something. Just like go, go figure it out, and then he'll like go. I'm like, hey, Jesus, two jets, nice oh, to hear no, over no, three jet. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's money, and I'll, I'll take that any day. But like, I'm looking at this too, and going back to these facilities, I'm like. The first thing I'm thinking about for all these guys coming in the league, I'm like, boy, are you about to be disappointed. Bro, <laughs> you are not lying. Oh, you think it's great? Like, here's, here's a check, and then there's a, a wooden locker with no pad. Um, yeah. yeah, we'll see you later. I, at least that's what I've only been when we went to When we went to Michigan, we sat down with Coach Herb, Herb who's like the strength coach there. And we're like, hey, what, what's your program about? And he literally brought up this chart. Insane, insane, bro. He's like, we look at everybody's deficiencies. And like, then he'd have like color systems to rate it. He'd have number yeah. systems and all this stuff. He he like sat with us for 30 minutes and broke everything down for us. And we walked away. In a way where we're like, were yo, we want to put, yo, you know, we want to Like if I would have known, I would have been like, man, I should have trained here. Like it re he really is just putting shit together. Yeah, man. Now let me, let me ask this. I'm going to play devil's advocate. Is it awesome from an outsider's perspective seeing like, oh, I love the level of care. But then it gets to a point of like, yo, I'm, you know, we're in our 30s now. Like I'm 30 plus stop micromanaging me. I know how to like deal with myself. Like, would that also play into a It's like, dude, leave me alone type thing. I know what I'm I think it depends on what your goals mindset. are. Yeah. yeah. It depends I mean, on the mindset I'm curious. too. For me personally, I want to find somebody that I completely trust and be like, all right, run the show. 
just tell me what to do and I'm going to do it as hard as I can. Now that's a fucking lineman that's, you want to have. Dude, that's the shit I like. Yeah. I really want. Just, just yeah. I'm going to tell you exactly what to do. Go fucking do it. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Especially when it comes yeah, to like I'm weight training and stuff. I do not like writing my own programs. I don't like looking at my shit. Okay, what do I have to do now? I want somebody right next to me being like three sets of eighth here. Then you go right here, right there. And you just fucking rip. That yeah, is like I agree. what I'm all about in that situation. As far as like micromanaging, like it'll show somebody's intelligence, whether they're working with a 21 year old or a 31 year old. Because if you have the same program for both those people, you're probably doing something wrong. Because the load on a 21-year-old is going to be way different than if you've got a lot of tread taken off the tires. Especially if you've you're doing grinding. the same movement, too. Yeah, same movement, all that. But, dude, his focus on mobility, flexibility, and, like, core strength and all that was really I was fucking say that, that's, that's Those are the details that, like, we were more so wowed gotcha. about. Okay, it's yeah. not necessarily whether... Like, like, he, here's your day. Like, you're going to be here. I'm like... No, no, well, no, you know, no, like, no. Not, no, like the, not the weight training part. All the okay, stuff yeah. with imbalances and, like, measuring you, your range of motion everywhere in all these spots that, with your hip capsule and everything else to where your degree your, your degree might be very short, right? Yeah, and there's, uh, and there's not, like, hey, you're deficient in this. We should probably work on that. It's like, you're deficient in this, and these are the things you need to do to fix it. Yeah. You feel like, like sometimes, boom, boom, boom. Like, like, in your experience in the nfl it's like they're just they do it but it's more like we're just going to check the box like with the fms test you know like th those little things that you've gotten like we talk about getting a, like a barometer of like okay let's see like where your you know your rear foot valgus varus whatever the hell they want to find out like in your foot your ankle to your knee like they're just kind of checking the box like well, what are you really doing with it and i i find myself I, I guess like i'm going to my 11th year now i'm like i hate wasting my time yeah and there's now i've, I've done groundhog day for 11 years now i'm like been through the same hoopla and banter and like i just keep seeing refined we keep doing the same thing expecting a different result like one that's insanity two i'm like you're now wasting my fucking time and we talk we got, all got kids like I, I you can shave off about two hours i mean we really want to shave about three hours of my day i can get home right and i could have my serotonin my chakras all aligned at all time high being with my family and then i come to work fucking ready to get after it i'm about efficiency like that, that's the thing i just like hearing this thing and talking about getting all this, all these barometers and being super efficient and using it as compared to like what I see in the league. I'm like, man, this is just, what are we doing? You sound like you've been doing some ayahuasca with Aaron using all those yeah. words, shock no. waves and all that. <laughs> no shockers and shit. Yeah. Some of those things I think when a team's trying to collect it, they're just trying to get like quantitative data. Like they're trying to, they're checking the boxes, but they're trying yeah. to overall see the big picture. They're not necessarily as focused. Like, what are you doing with it? Like exactly you can, you can gather thing. all the information you want, but what are you doing with it? Right. And if you're just, gathering to check a box or like, oh, because you heard this, like, well, do you even know how to use this information? Because if you don't, now you just wasted it, like, both our time. But, like, again, for them, like, they got to be there anyways. Like, the people who work there. Yeah, I think uh, a big contrast of college and NFL is college, they got those guys 365. All the time, you can work on all that stuff and kind of work through it. I think in the NFL, when you look at the weightlifting programs in the training room, their main goal is to get you to Sunday. So if you're in the weight room, it's not going to be like, hey, we're going to try these different movements. Like we need to hit these meat and potatoes because we only know we'll have you for only an hour between this time and that time before you have to go to meetings and all that. They want to check some boxes rather than, and saying make you better is a tough one because it makes it look bad for them. But really it's like, we need to make sure these guys keep their strength, stay ahead of the sticks as much, we, much as we can for as amount of time we have with them. And then- Yeah, but being healthy and hitting there. the meat and potatoes is like, so if that's what you have, especially we don't have school to work around. It's like, all right. um. Yo, for uh, for me, like you're not gonna load my back up like a standard. Like I, I can't tell you the last time I put a heavy bar like on my upper neck and then squatted. That is not how I roll. But like we, like we're gonna do meat potatoes. We're all gonna do that. Like what? Like no, put it. Like there's so many different like machines and ways to go around it. Right. Pitch that's dark, that type of stuff. Yeah, that's all my. I'm like what? I, I don't know, man. Sometimes it's just just that's the way we've always done it. That's what we're gonna do it. Yeah. Right. I, I that's get a tough thing to hear. Oh, dude, I get very very annoyed. This has been an incredible podcast. Yeah, this has been a very good yeah, podcast. I've really, I've really enjoyed every minute of this. Um, All right, quick break, quick break. Duke Cannon, shout out, no free shout outs to Duke Cannon. The boys at Duke Cannon are back on the bus and they're here to keep everyone looking good and smelling great. Everyone knows that the off season is the best time to put in the hard work and Duke Cannon makes hardworking grooming goods for hardworking dudes. From their thick body wash to their big ass brick of soap, and antiperspirants and deodorants, Duke Cannon has your back and your pits and your face. I have to specifically and personally endorse the coal mining face wash. That is my go-to product for the boys, and that's the one you should be picking up, whether you're at Target or online. Use code BUSSIN10 at checkout on DukeCannon.com for 10% off. 
courtesy of the boys for the boys or pick up your favorite products at your local target retailer back to the Bakhtiari episode. Okay. Well, okay. Here's a question before you can get to that because we are talking about teeth and fresh smiles. What's up brother? Yeah. I, I, I I called you didn't even fucking talk about What's it. Up, I, dude? You, I, you, shot, you shot like a video and I was like, Oh, look at, look at here. You got hell a new friend. Yeah, on the hell yeah. Didn't even want to recognize it. And then eventually did. I'm like, there it is. But why do you even brush your teeth? You have fake teeth. That's a good they point. I stopped. Smile. There's no, oh, they, really? they can. Oh yeah. And things can get rolling now. Do you have oh. to? Do you have to get your teeth cleaned, or do you even call it teeth cleaning now? What do you mean? Like because they're not real teeth? teeth. You floss. You just call I it like floss a floss now. Is it kind of like going to like an auto body system. shop, getting like the yeah tune up? Yeah, like an oil change for the teeth. I just love shit talking. You know, <laughs> you know what? I haven't been to the dentist since I got my teeth put in. I can tell, which is why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, one thing I noticed with these pieces is the what? food gets caught in okay, there way more. Wh why? What? I'm just curious. I I. I we, oh, yeah, we, we, we know why. We, we know, we know why. Yeah. Which is great, dude. That you got fucking money, yeah. dude. Yeah. The Colorado's facilities Fuck, before the that's team. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I, yeah. I, I trust me. I, I've been there. <laughs> that was but small. I'm generally curious. Like, no homo. Like, I thought you had plenty of fine teeth. I'm just kind of curious. Like, was it just like a personal? Like, you know what? This is how I fucking like them. I want them pearly whites because I see a bunch of my teammates come in and they Bro, smile. That's, that was I a agree. reason. So if that's what it is, I I'm cool. I respect. Yeah. I just didn't. I didn't want to assume. I wanted to ask you directly. I'm like, what? What's, yeah, that's what's a, the reason? that's a good question. There's really like not a massive reason. There wasn't. I didn't have the Colorado facilities. I like when Will got them. I was like, damn, those things look really fucking. Colorado's good. catching strays right now. And I was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll be there. Hey, yeah. listen, for those of you watching, we'll be there tomorrow. Um, uh, I don't know. When Will got them, I liked them a lot. And then I see these dudes coming in all the time, and I'm, I literally thought to myself, why not? I just do them straight white. They look good. So I'm just going to get I, it done. I, I definitely don't hate it. Now, don't they have to like shave them down in nubs though? No, it depends if you have to do like, I think it's, I don't know what the right word invasive. is. Invasive or non-invasive. Okay. And my teeth were like on the you. smaller end. Yeah. <laughs> that boy had them chiclets. Yeah. He had them little bits. That, that, that's why I would, like, I'm out. But mine, mine, they like just shaved a little bit. And then my real teeth are still there. They just put like stuff on it. And then See, that's what I'm scared of. Like, I don't want them. I, but you got nice teeth. I, I don't yeah. have great teeth. I, I, I got, well, Give I mean, smile. Guess, like they're not good teeth. Oh, yeah, they're, they're fine. They're fine. About. They're, fine. Yeah. they're fine. But like, I I just I don't know. Like, I thought like yeah, I got I never had braces, but I got this like little alligator tooth kind of hanging low. Like yeah, I've thought about it. But I'm like nah, dude. Like I'm not gonna. Yeah, but that's that's you thinking about more than anybody. Like I see what you're yeah. seeing, but I don't think like all oh, yeah, his that's, teeth and, and that's my part. I, think I, you got I don't nice think I'll teeth. ever get like fake teeth. But I was just kind of curious. Like I know certain guys. I'm like yo, you need some fucking fake teeth. Like my right. boy Elton Jenkins. Like I was like that's I'm so happy. It's the first <laughs> yeah, thing you yeah. did. Cause them fucking bitches. When he came in, I made fun of. I called him like pencil sharpener mouth. Like his shit was fucked up. Yeah. And he also had all the pencil sharpener shavings in there. This motherfucker never cleaned his teeth. Oh like, what? You, I want to say to the guy, Lee, I'm so happy he did. Yeah. He's gonna be pissed me. I'm I'm saying this. Yeah. But he's got great teeth now, and he's like showing it off. I'm like, good for you. Like you you deserve. It. And then there's other guys. I'm like, I'll use you as an example. I'm like, dude, your teeth were great. Like I don't. I literally had to no homo. I like started stalking and went back to like oh, when you didn't have teeth. Saying, no, yeah, you like, don't gotta say that here. We're we're a, we're pro homo here. Uh, okay. Well, but like. uh <laughs> I was like, yeah, his, I didn't never saw anything wrong with his teeth. Like, I always thought there was like got to be like a legit reason. Like, guys either got too small teeth, they don't have like the gum yeah. the ratio, or they got fucking Colorado facility, like yeah. OG Colorado facility going on. I know. So, no, that's a, that, that is a thing where it's like I I wish I had a good reason to do it, but I at the end of the day, I just wanted to. You're gonna it get it, like ass implants or like calf implants. I thought later? about doing my ass a little bit, but I've been doing a lot of RDLs lately. Do RDLs get glutes? Yeah, they do. I yeah. guess I don't do them good enough. RDL, I've been back squatting too. I know, so you don't do back squat. But that's what's like the number one thing I feel like. But hang on, hang on. You, you, I, you, I feel like you were like that at one point in time. What's that? When we trained with Dobson and stuff, you were not ever about putting anything on your spine. Yes, you're right. So, yeah, and I feel like, I feel but like, it was I, never, it was never because, no, um, no, he, I'm I, just saying he had that. I feel like you just recently well, started. We would always do the, the, the safety spot, bar, the safety okay. bar lunges. Yeah. Yeah. And stuff yeah, like holding that. the bar, yeah, holding, holding the bar, the bar doing eccentric lifts. So I'll do the bear squat. I just won't put a bar on my back probably more than 225. If it's going to go above that, you're going to put the little, the one that disperses the weight because there's no point putting that on my spine. Every time I did it and then I realized like, why is my back keep getting thrown out or getting fucked up? I'm, I'm not about this. You know what, dude? When, uh, the reason why I stopped putting weight on my back is I would see the older guys not putting weight on their back and they'd always have back issues. And they would always say it's because I did back squat and it's not good for you, all this stuff. So I kind of bought into that. But Ryan Suckup, the kicker for, the, uh, for Tampa Bay, he was at the Titans for a long time. Always had knee pain. Always. Always. Had something. He's always flying somewhere. Yeah, he's flying somewhere, at. getting, uh, what was that stuff called? Ingen uh, Regenicane. Re Regenicane, yeah. yes. He oh, would always yeah, get that. He's like, yeah, I'd feel good. Then a couple months later, and I, I thought he was going to be done. I would talk to him at the Titans. He'd be like, yeah, I probably got one year. Maybe it was like a year-to-year -year thing. He's uh, working
I asked him, I was like, hey, what happened? What happened? Like, does your knee feel good now? He's like, my knee feels fantastic. I'm like, what's the biggest difference? He's like, I started back squatting. And I never had back pain or anything like that. I've never been a back pain guy. I've had a couple flare ups here and there, but I've never had like back issues. So I was like, let me just do this. And it's good for like, you know, and, when you go through ACL, When did you start doing it? I legit, well, after this second ACL, you started back squatting more? Is when, like, yeah, once I was able to start loading, well, I would put, I would put weight on my back. And I did like, you know, 275 for 10 the other day and I have no back pain or nothing. It's like, it, it helps a lot. It really does. So I don't know, something to think about, but I, is, you, is, you is, is, is your it back the load? Out? Is it the load or just the sheer? Because like, like, I'm not against loading. So much I'm against in... the actual just old OG bar going on my upper neck and loading that thing super heavy. Like, I'll, 225 is probably the most. Yeah, you could probably, you do a safety bar squat. Yeah, it's I, fine. I, I could do that. Like, I'll that, load that thing up like four or five. You know, it right. doesn't matter. I'll get that thing up high. Like, the But thing, I just don't like it because it's not strictly on my spine going straight down the force. Like that, I just don't play with. The thing that squats do that a lot of those other alternate movements don't do is like works your entire body. Like it's quads, it's your glutes, it's core. your core, it's strengthening your back as well. It's like, it's so many things. Now when you get on a pit shark and you put that, the belt around your waist, you're still working your quads, but now you're missing, you're missing the core, you're missing the back, you're not getting as much. Glute. What about it's bear more squat of an, then? What's a bear squat? The, uh, the one that goes over your, like your shoulders. You ever been that thing? Safety yeah. bar squat? Uh, Kind of, you know, the one that like you can like was, load weight up on here and you like you stand up on it and like you pop that thing, drop it down. Then you just do some squats and the, the weights going over your shoulders. And then, uh, and, then, I, and then you have like the oh, one that I think you're talking about where out. you stand like it's like coat comes across like this, goes across your yeah, neck. And you hold, you hold you it, like, hold right it like right here or you can put your hands in front. Go, go up, go up. I think I just saw it. this right here. Yeah, exactly. That, yeah. That's that, the, that's, the Kaiser machine. Yeah, the Kaiser machine. Yeah. yeah. So the Kaiser machine is great and it's air. So like you get. Okay, but there's there's ones that have actual weight. Like that one has weight. That yeah. one has weight. Like I've used that and I've used the yeah. weight one. Any type of machine workout hey, you're doing. Okay, good. I, I wasn't it's, uh, it's isolated. So if you're doing like um, a bench press on a on a machine where the, the plates are on the side and you're holding it, you're taking out the stability you would use in your shoulders. The same thing with this would go is you're now taking out the core aspect of it as much because you don't have to stabilize when you walk a, a small oh, be, right oh, back. Oh, be, because it's fixed. Okay, so because it's a fixed so if, movement, if, if yeah. we do safety safety bar squat and normal back like uh, back squat, now we're playing the same game. Yeah, you're playing a similar game. You're not necessarily playing the same game okay. because the safety bar squat it's still more it still stable. comes over and it's more stable. But there is that point of like when you're getting yep. down, you have to ignite everything in here to go up and down. You know. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I, mean, I, I am speaking out of turn a little bit because I'm not a prof. I'm not. I don't know this stuff professionally. It's what I've. I think. I think you take your time. Hold and notice. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, safety I, bar I in the back squat. It's kind of like the similar of like going to a front squat. It just kind of changes where the load's going to be on. Right. It. Yeah. Right. Like a front squat's always more. Like, that's you, big time core. Do you guys like the load more on your back or your front? Right now, for me, hey. my front. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that one yet. I'm up for both, brother. <laughs> how much? How much time you got, buddy? Yeah, <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. I, yeah, that, that was mine's that, more that front right there. now because I have I have some some low back. Yeah, Will's got Will's got a little SI deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have you ever followed knees over toes? I follow his account. Yeah, I started doing it when I heard that Saquon. He said he felt really good from that. I asked him. And then he's like, yeah, I did that thing. And that's what like put me over, like put me back to where I was. I'm like, all right. So then he slowly like the, the, I'm, I'm, on the I'm jaded about at. like sign up for stuff though. So like, I just kind of look. You have to sign up for it. There's uh, some good news. He wants to come on the bus. So I think he's going to come down and visit for a couple of days. Love that. Yeah. I think we're going to do some workouts together. with him. You should come. Uh, I would love that. Yeah. That'd be cool. I think in his, in his, you know, progression, uh, program. I'm going to be pissed if you guys don't invite me. You're yeah. You're, no, you are invited. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. We will. We will. Hold on. Hold on. When though? I don't know. I, we, we still yeah, we got to I'm a little bitch. I got to go back for OTA. That's right. We'll, we'll make sure it's in the summer. Yeah, we can do yeah, that. Unless he comes in during OTAs and we don't have a choice. Yeah. Do you ever come, mm. do you ever come during the weekends? Mm. Dude, I, I mean, name, name, name your day. Name your day. I'm coming. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Oh, I'm going to come. Oh, hold on. That was actually being serious. <laughs> don't you dare oh, come. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to come. I thought you were trying to set me up. <laughs> no. The, uh, are you hey, talking about the Kamala Harris? Are you doing the Kamala Harris, dude? Wasn't that Hillary? Or is it, oh, it was the Kamala, Kamala yeah. The, yeah. Don't you and dare then, come. Don't oh, you dare I'm, come. I'm going to come. I said, okay, so I saw another good meme that's that. And it's like, yo, these uh, DJ beats be going crazy. And this, they kept building up being, don't you dare come. Don't you? And then it gets building up. And then all of a sudden, four drops. You see Donald Trump go, I'm going to come. And then, bam. 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 <laughs> yeah, I've seen that same video. Uh, that's funny. Man. Yeah. That's but good. yeah, dude, uh, back squat. Yeah, he, he, what I was saying is his progression is he ultimately not get you 
into back squatting, but there's so many stages that he has to where you're kind of like taking care of your body as you're progressing to like a back squat or anything. I've been following like some of the things like for, I don't know, the tibi, tibialis. Or yeah. Right? yeah. I've been doing a bunch of those and now more I've been, I look at his like lunge thing and like he tell, it says progressions. I get to one, I guess is like pain free. I've been walking backwards a shit ton. Just like he probably yeah, give you access. Backwards. He'd probably give you yeah. access to all of it. Yeah. He oh, is. We'll get he the he up. definitely we'll get seem, the he going, seems extremely bro. innovative. Yeah. But, I'm anxious to hear what he has to say about this because I was talking to some PT people, third party PT people, and they're like, that stuff's not good for athletes. They should be just training where they're at. Like, if you're in a stance, you shouldn't go below 90 degrees. I didn't ask too many more questions because I really didn't know. Who told I, you that? I'm not going to say. I think there's. I'm uh, not going to say because I have a lot of respect for them. Yeah. I think there's places in the programming to where when you get closer to training for sport, you get more of a sport specific stance. But I think when you get in the first part of the off season, like the first 16 weeks or going up into OTAs is a time to work on your range of motion, your mobility, yeah. and like finding big ranges to work in because you can get a guy who is more sports specific and they never go below there and they have whatever on the back. Let's just use back squat. And when you narrow their stance or make them go lower, they'll, more so crumble because they're not built. They don't have the stability to go down that low. Mm -hmm. Now, if you take somebody who's de been developing more of a more of a narrow, sports specific stance that goes ass to grass, once you get more into, we're not going below ninety. You get a maybe a little bit wider stance and everything else. Their numbers are going to flourish because they've been built from the foundation to to build out like their range of motion. That's really well said. I think both Thanks. of you guys are actually right because think about it. Like what makes sense on a simple equation? You strengthen where you're going to be working. Mm -hmm. You protect yourself and you are stronger. So you don't put yourself in a com compromised position. Go your way. And the, I believe this too is football is a very chaotic sport. You're going to be at some point caught right. yeah. in, in a fucked up compromised spot. So somewhere. don't let the first time be when you're caught and you don't know how much force. Because then, then it's like the variability goes into play. You don't know how much force there. So then it comes into that, which that's yeah. how I've also trained too, is like getting the spots where you're a little uncomfortable and strengthen those areas for the chance. Too. So then you own where you are strong. And then when you're not, at least you have the reaction the reaction point the yeah. same thing like uh, neurologically there's a there's a couple times like i'll always end that i was told like always end when you're fatigued doing a bunch of stability stuff because when you're unstable that's when things like that's where bad things can occur yeah yeah, like, yeah. Then, then, like, neurologically and also just like getting that last little bit of a uh, conditioning in the muscle like w how can it perform once it's so fatigued can you still lock it in and be stable yeah I was going to say, when we were doing that triphasic stuff too, that one summer when we were at Vandy and you're doing more, you know, eccentric for the first few weeks, then uh, isometric for the second part of the programming. Then in the third part, it was concentric. And then like peaking going up to training camp was more of like being in all those very sports specific for those last few weeks just yeah. to create more force. Dobson is really, really good. That was, that was actually Rex, right? Who wrote those programs? Yeah, Rex is kind of the genius behind mm -hmm. of the programming. Dob is just, you know, Dob's just the boy. Dob knows his shit, but Rex is like the mad little scientist behind. Yeah. Studying a lot of the the Nordic hamstring. I love I love anytime you're a mad scientist or like anytime you're trying to think uh around the corner when it comes to health, performance, like I actually would gravitate more towards. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. like what you already done, like, yeah, that's good for now, but like I'm trying to be What's next? Yeah, I'm I'm yeah. I'm, I'm I'm trying to always like get better. And you know the way that they think? They adapt in their thinking. Like mm -hmm. maybe something's not working at that moment. You know they're going to go into their little lab and try to figure something out yeah. to make you, to help. Maybe it's an alternative that you don't want to say you don't want to load your bag. All right. He doesn't want to work in this capacity. Like let's find alternatives. You well, know they're going to adapt in their thinking. Let me just ask this. Like do you want a doctor that uh, graduated in fucking 1982 that looked at the 82 textbook and now is like cutting you up? And it's like, well, that's, that's what I knew. And he was a stud then, but I'm like, look how much like, how, how much more information and how much better technology has gotten in the last, what is that? Fucking almost 40 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So would you still want to rely on that guy or like the new upcoming dude who's like, Oh, we learned that this is a the better uh, way to go about it. And this is, and like, I would be like, okay, I don't want like the fresh guy. Like, Hey, this is my first time doing it. And I right, right from this, but like sweet spot. Yeah. There's that sweet, maybe spot. that old guy, if he's adapted his thinking yeah. and got with the times yeah. versus just strictly being yeah. Neil Elitrosh. He's hey, yeah, that's a like, dude. That is a, my guy. Dude. I fucking love Elitrosh. He, He's he's a stud. Like he's got like that, just like it. And I was like pissed because when I first met, I when I finally met, I'm like, damn, mm. should have met you earlier because you are, you are like. Where'd you go the first time? Got that? Yeah, that's why I, I did. Uh, my guy in uh, Green Bay, um, Pat McKenzie, and he's awesome. And I I don't discredit anything from what like I, I'm, this isn't me alluding to any of this like ups and downs with my injury because of him. He was awesome, but like I know like after sitting with Neil, damn, like yo, you 
you're tight. I, I was a little like wary because like I just didn't know. But like now that you know, again, you live and you learn. I'm like, yo, Neil's. He's got he's got that swag about him. Like, Dude, I'm sure when does, you met him, he's man. got that swag. He's got that look. I've said it before. Like he looks like he's gotten a little bit of work done, but it's a classy amount. Mm -hmm. He's got a calm confidence about him. Dude, you, when you talk to him, he like he doesn't react, talk to you. He digests it for a second, and then he mm -hmm. comes in with something that blows you away. Mm -hmm. Very smart, extremely confident. But a great dude. I'm a huge. I cannot say enough good yeah. things about that. No, I, I that's how I totally am with him too, and that's where I like, uh, like after I was like, yo, I, he fucks. Yeah, he definitely fucks. You guys make me want to just go get random knee surgery, but <laughs> dude, you should. It doesn't have to be knee. It doesn't even have to be knee. Yeah, just just in all. general. Yeah, he, uh, Tommy yeah, Johns. It. He does it all. Fuck it. Fix fix everything. Yeah, yeah he, no, he's he's yeah, he's, he's is the fucking top yeah. dog, man. He really is the best in the game. No, so all all the stuff that you've everyone has heard about him, but he's like that. He's like that, where he's like always thinking towards the future and what to do. Well, did do. you did you do surgery with him? On, on any of yeah, stuff? and uh, okay. this past one. Yeah. So did you not see like when you sign one of the forms? It's like, hey, I'm going to be using some of the things I've learned. Yeah. Like my like my own proprietary way. I, you're agreeing that you're okay with me doing some of mm -hmm. these ways that he's learned from. Like, hey, after doing this so much, like I'm just going to perfect this. Right. I can do what the old thing was. And I, like, so like I really like I respect like people that that do that. So like, notice a massive difference. He's been there. You go. All time, dude. Yeah. He really is. Good. I'm glad we're gonna give him a plug. Neil's Neil's a stud. Yeah. Shout out the boy, man. He's Hope fucking to meet awesome. you one day. His whole crew is awesome, too. The people <laughs> people he works with, like the the rehab people out there, yeah, too. They're, they're great. They're awesome. Yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah. It's a good little the only thing is shitty is that he's in LA. That's the only thing I'm like, God. I know, but it is oh. nice to visit LA because you get to the weather, great food. You're such a warm weather guy. I can't like it's still know, kind isn't of like it frustrating. It does frustrate me a little bit because I'm like, this. Again, I haven't been here for a full year yet. And we're getting back to like, okay, I'm here. But like, it's not that bad. And here? I remember I remember talking to you like, oh, yeah, yeah like, gotta be something like, you know, I know you're from Arizona. Yeah. I'm like, dude, first of all, fuck Arizona. That heat, no fucking You could have said it differently. Dude. You could have said it that differently. I, I feel the same way. I remember I went, I, I, so Daniel uh, Munier lives out there. And I remember I went the like. Fucking boy, Dan, by the way. Guy. That's it. I know that's your guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I got, you know, again, when, when you're like in like my really close, I got, that's like OG, OG guy. I remember going to visit me and it was in summer and I was like, fuck this. I got a bachelor party. I got to go out there in June and I'm dreading it. it well, that's on, so that's on your friends hot. for going out there in June. Like, listen, you made enough money. You go out to Arizona. These, these, are, these, are, these aren't football friends. To I told you, I got like a couple guys, OG, these are like childhood friends. They ain't, I'm they talking they about your money. money. I'm not talking about them. <laughs> I'm talking about you. <laughs> like, you, you, there ain't no reason to be in Arizona between the months of uh, late May to October. Ain't got to do it. Shouldn't do it. Mm. You're a bad person if you do do it. If you go late October to probably around right now, it's the best weather ever. Sun's, sun's out every single day. People are driving nice vehicles because they can because there's no rusting going on there because it's a dry climate. You don't have a bunch of sea salt coming in. There's no salt in the road from the winter. Having a great time. There's great events out there. You got spring training. Fun fucking times. You want to go in the mountains? Brother, drive an hour and a half north. You get four seasons up there. You got Sedona. Get I am not going to sit here and let you just half south. spew Mexico. four seasons in Arizona. Get the fuck. Pull up, pull up, I know South Arizona. I know I don't give a fuck. That. Pull it up. How many dude. times you been? How many times you been? A dozen. Are you going to go? So you're saying my like mom, My mom dated a, a firefighter up in Payson. There you so go. Okay. we used to go but, up there all the okay. time. All right. But I, you're, you're telling me like, hey, ski season, I'm going to go to Flagstaff. Flagstaff. People go up there. Look up, look no, up I'm, their I'm weather right now. Instead of like, huh, you know, like... uh. Maybe go to like it's probably warm Tahoe. right now. M m yeah, maybe go to the Rockies. Fifty-one like, degrees. Look look up and look it up in uh, in January, February. I'm just saying. Just I, I go think back to images. Ten, just go back to images. weather, I think, is fantastic. I, I love it. I don't think it's. I mean, yeah. I don't think it's terrible. Flagstaff. A lot of the boys would disagree. Flagstaff, Flagstaff. Flagstaff. I, I don't all that right at all. There. Again, I, I'm comparing to Green Bay. Like I, I know shit weather. You want to kind of see shit weather? You come hang out there for. Yeah, dude. Time. I mean, that's also you could have probably the best training program in the world in Green Bay. People still aren't going to stay there. No disrespect to people in Green Bay. The people you do out there, you guys are built different. But I, I'm not. Taylor, I'm, Taylor's pro I'm a sunshine Asian guy. I, no, I, I, I know. I'm, I'm I remember. A pro I remember. Sunshine guy than I am pro Asian. I don't feel like it's that lack of sun here though. For me, see, we got some of the boys. Ignorance. They get like for, seasonal for, depression. You guys do. You guys think this there. is bad? They buy the stock there. Mike, Mike. The weather's not bad, but it's just gray. All the time in Bro, the winter. Yes. No sun. And you want a perfect example? Right now. Look outside. Okay, go go look at the weather for uh Sunday to Thursday next week. So you're you're telling me these three days, like that's it, I gotta move. Like I can't I can't do full time. It's April now. <laughs> what are we talking about? Okay, when I first got here Bro, in January. And, and, it wasn't that bad. What do you 
What are you talking about? Yes, it was. Oh my god! I'm it's with not you. always. Gray I, I, here, I will take. I will take it's gray. No, it's not always gray here. I will take gray over I'm like one ten. I'm talking about the winter we season. Experience every season to the fullest degree here. We can get snow. We can get heat. We get humidity. We you get don't, rain. You don't experience fall and spring. You get three what? weeks of both, both of those. Dude, what? Are oh, you brother, no, about, no, not my guy. No spring. Those three weeks are amazing, but hey, you don't it. get a full. Oh. Grab it. Grab it. Grab the emotion. No fall here. That's no, you get live. fall here. I'm saying you, you, but you don't get the full experience of all this. No, I, I, I disagree because I saw, I've seen photos, and my wife who came out here, photos, Green Bay. Green, no, I'm, no, I'm, t- I'm saying Green Bay, like their like fall is gorgeous. The worst thing about it is that when the leaves turn, it drops so quick. Here they at least stay for like double the amount of time. Like you're talking six to eight weeks, you get this color. This color is beautiful. Yeah, like this, that's not six to eight weeks. Ah, oh, God. Yeah, you get a good a fall out here. Starts, yeah, it's definitely you get longer. Bro, that shit just... starts dropping in October by the end of November. That's, that's eight weeks. Months. That would be eight weeks. Eight weeks. I, that's eight exactly weeks. what I'm saying. I, I would fucking case, love it. Your yeah. Honor. <laughs> <Look at that. laughs> oh, yes. That. I'll take that. That's what I'm saying. Like Green Bay, it's really literally like spring. Three, it, it's like maybe a month. Because it gets so cold so quick. It Here's falls. what I don't like. Here's what I don't like. Why are we even talking about Green Bay? We're talking about nice, <laughs> like nice shit. Look, man, because I have to be there. Dude, I fucking, I love, I just did it. yeah, I love Nashville. <laughs> I fucking love, I love Nashville. Yeah, no, it's, it is dope. If there is a negative of Nashville, it's the weather. Point blank. It's not that sunny. It rains a lot. And listen, when it's sunny, it's phenomenal. The, those couple of Saturdays we had at the pool, you, you ain't beating that. It's like 70 degrees, sun's outside. We're having a good time. If you go to your Twitter in the last month, like half your tweets are like, weather's phenomenal in Nashville. Like, <laughs> beautiful day. Dude, tell me I'm wrong, though. Last week, it was great. This week, ass. Roller the coaster. week before that, roller ass. Coaster. You gotta be the week before that, great. Coaster. I love this. I love this. And this now we great. have this. Next week, amazing. It's going to be fucking amazing I next week. I feel like I'm part of the PA right now. Like, the way you're getting mad. Like, I feel like you're yelling. I'm, I'm, I'm the PA. Saying, oh. They got a fucking homer right here. <laughs> Brother, you literally said got a homer. when we were in Arizona, now. if you could live here in the wintertime, you would. Yeah, if I didn't have to pay for anything, if, if it, everything was perfect in this world, it does, hang on, I hang on, hang on. Live in it doesn't mean that a, that doesn't mean that Tennessee's bad yeah, just because you want to live in Arizona. Okay. You know what I'm saying. Arizona rips. At that time, with the time you're going, brother, your friends okay. fucked up. So, so I, I'll, I'll say this. Desert ain't that okay. sweet all I'm the not, time. I'm though. not saying Arizona, Arizona's bad at all. I do agree there are some good times. Overall, when I'm like, and this is this came, like I legit asked my wife, Frank, I was like, yo, like, do you want to go live in Arizona? I, we were just trying to find a place to live. Mm-hmm. Arizona came up and we looked. I had studied like the weather reports, how it was going to be on the seasonal. Because I'm like, anyone can live somewhere when it's nice. Mm-hmm. But what happens when the shit hits, like when you get the shitty weather? Yeah. And then that's what kind of started like drawing me here. I'm like, this ain't that bad. Like you don't have like that, those low of lows, like the tornado thing. Like that's the only thing that kind of freaks me out being a California guy, which I'm sure if I talk earthquakes, you'd be like, what the fuck? But I'll, I'll say like, I was in California. California stays like the pinnacle of weather, but. How about San Lucas? They worth the tax. I mean, you start throwing all the other stuff. Yeah, exactly. Taxes. I'm not gonna lie to the people. You can find your little clicks of like good people, but overall, like I can, I say California, especially Southern California is like when you're, prom king and prom queen you get a ticket one-way ticket to california everyone thinks that this is their road it's their like they have the right of way they get to go through the door no one says please like it's just so hard to like it pisses me off like come in here like someone just holds the door open for me mm. that's so like i'm not asking you to hold the door open nor do i need to but if my hands are full they're at least acknowledging that and doing that and saying please and thank you yes sir no sir like oh like i give give me a little bit of rain like i'm cool with that because if you like in la yeah, I get great weather, but come summertime, too, that shit kind of sucks. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of super hot weather. And mm-hmm. I was also living in the valley, and that's kind of deserty. It gets hot. So, but I do know Arizona, like, that's a different type of heat. It's hot. It's just, hot just out like there. like the south. Again, I'm sure, like, yeah. there's two months here. I haven't experienced summer yet, but I'm sure that the swamp summer is fucking tough, right? You it's get some swamp. Yeah, 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 like, like, is, is it that bad? Like, I, I don't know. I have I mean, no it's humid. It's like anywhere it's you've been bad. where it gets humid yeah. and, and hot. It's is it Missouri time, humidity, you know I mean? though? Because like I've dealt with some like terrible Missouri humidity. I've also seen it's like similar. Florida. It's similar, it's similar to Missouri. Yeah, yeah there's, a couple, there's a couple weeks in the summertime where you're like, hey, this is pretty tough to deal with. Bugs but and shit. Compared to Arizona. Bugs though. are bad, too. Uh, like Ar- totally Arizona, different. Arizona, like summer heat versus like Tennessee or Nashville. It's a totally different heat. heat. Which one's worse? Um... I think there's there's pros and cons to both. I think when you're talking strictly weather, just the weather, Arizona is worse. You bring in, and this is, and okay. the longevity of the heat is worse. Now, the thing that would bring Nashville up to the worst category is when you when you add in the bugs, 
and all that. How bad are the bugs? I don't. It gets fucking pretty bad. It's pretty bad. It ain't like that. But it's it's like it's kind of annoying. It's annoying. Like you always gotta have some sort of prey on. Bad. They're out. Here. They're out I, here. I got succulent blood. I know those motherfuckers love this shit. I'm I'm wor- I'm worried. Oh, they're out. They're out there. I'm, I'm, I'm worried. They're out there. Yeah, they're out there. Are they're are gonna out get there. your ass for sure. Mm. But we're talking a, a very short span of time. So like you would still put Arizona at that. One thing that I would give grace to in Arizona is you catch some shade. It drops like 10, 15 degrees right there because it's so dry. It's boom, boom. I, I can't. You can't. I can't. One thing I'll give Daisy, you catch some shade? Yeah. 10 to 15 degrees. I mean, where, where the fuck you find yeah, shade? You're in Arizona, bro, <laughs> and your car's outside and you go to get in there, you, you better pray to God that little buckle doesn't touch your skin because you're getting third degrees. It's going to fucking hurt. Like, I, I I legit, like, when I went to go visit, like, the whole, like, put your, that, uh, thing. Yeah, and the little sunscreen yeah. thing. Like, they actually have to do it because the sun's that bad. I'm like, damn, like, that's a, that's a different breed. Yeah. Like, I've dealt with, like, heat, like, in California, like, it's hot. I never put that thing. I'm like, all right, my, my car's gonna be a little hot. So be it. But, like, if you don't, your car is fucked. Yeah. Or even, like, it'll damage, like, the, like, the, what, 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 do, you, what do you call it? The dash of, of your yeah. car. Like, see, that's where I'm like, yo, like, not, not to mention, we're big guys. Fuck that. I'm not, I'm not just going to be sweating all... I hate sweating. I'd rather be in cold weather than hot weather. That's, See, that's where we differ. I'm, I'm, I'm an error on being cold than hot. Well, I got yeah. all skin, too. I still like getting a little pigmentation. You do have a great little... You, you have a nice, nice little tone yeah. to you. I, ju- I just went to Hawaii. I got a little extra. So. Also, I Good for you. A humble brag. I know, yeah. yeah. I, I kind of felt I'm like, yeah, I didn't. Which I, brings me to another point. Like, you don't got to live somewhere year-round. I mean, for the, your kids, yeah. Not necessarily. What are you, you going to do? Have them go to two different schools? No. Home, you can homeschool. You can do a whole bunch True. of stuff. And your kid's young. I'm, I want to find somewhere I can just entrench myself, which there you I go. believe I, is I love that too. Finding a culture and living in it. Yeah. That's the move for yeah, sure. I love that. Now, let me pause this real quick. You Please. came to Arizona a little hard. No, I didn't. I didn't think <laughs> so. You did. He, he goes, brother, Arizona's not that sweet. Now, no, I said I will. The, you are not I that good. Desert pal. life is Arizona's not that, not that guy. What, what about Arizona's not that sweet? Just all the brown. Like, it's just not yeah. the, every Every building God, looks the people, exact same. In the same. dirt. In the, yeah. Every building. See, people say that to me, but I fuck with, like, I, the, an the sunsets are amazing. I love the, like, the cacti. I I mess with that vibe. Better I also sun, grew on, up better in Better sunsets. Vibe. Arizona, Nashville. Oh, Arizona. Wow, well, there's some nice it's ones not out here. Not really close. I don't know. The colors nice here. Right? Colors here are great. Obviously, you haven't caught a... Hey, t- Arizona sunset. Hey, Google, Google the images, Jack. Google oh, the images. You're gonna fucking you're die. You're gonna, this is the mountain you're gonna you die on. That. Did you catch? A, uh, you catch a silhouette of a desert landscape under a purple and gold sky. Ooh, you're there, living. There's dude. a lot of plus in Arizona. There's a lot of plus. I do like that that brown look though. I think that's awesome. I, I, I can get. I can get. I understand it. Like that. Like you pretty. see that right there. Those like that's based on photos. It looks like Az has the sunset. Yeah, you can get yeah, and that is the thing that plays into it too. Like, there's a lot of a lot of flourishing trees around here. I mean, look at those. So you can those see farther, mountains. which I mean, adds those like mountains are kind of getting me a little bit. Midwest has better people than the the West Coast. Midwest, Southern. Well, again, I, I, he's, I, like, I don't, he's, he's bringing Missouri into play. I, I don't know who. Uh, I'm saying you get more hospitality around here than you oh, would. One hundred percent. Arizona is a lot of you know. It's everybody's done up out there. Everybody's got the cars. It's like, it's similar to like in L.A. Yeah. Look, look at this third yeah. photo. The third photo in. That's a Bonter sunset right there. Which one? Bonter, Missouri, right there. The, the, one. <laughs> hey, they thought they were Bonter. Let's go, buddy. That's that's from the top of the chat dome. Damn. <laughs> yeah, said, I mean, Damn. I, I, yeah, I guess. I mean, yeah, no, I, I think there's a lot of there's there are a lot of pros and cons in Missouri, Arizona. Jack. Why is that? You just wouldn't. I tell just me why. I just don't think you'd survive in Missouri. Just tell me why. We can talk after. No, no, no. You wanted to bring this up now. No, that's all, that's all I wanted to say. All right, that's fine. Yeah. Hey, Jack. You wouldn't survive Jack, in Bonterre. We, we will talk about like after. that. Well, you wouldn't survive in Bonterre. I would, but. You wouldn't. I would. Not, hey, no. Jack. Jack, Bro. Jack, Jack, Jack. <laughs> I, I agree with Will. Yeah, you're just mad because of the whole Arizona thing. I get it. You're so heated. I'm with Will. Why, though? Exactly. Just, I just don't that's think okay. you're built for Bonterre. That's okay, man. I think you'd be built for Bonterre. <laughs> <You're both. laughs> what, what was the capacity of like your town like what was the population 4,000 4,500 you're from that uh, small town I don't yeah. want to live there I did not know you what, came what from that small it? town like 400. He said, no <laughs> I was going to say maybe a couple thousand higher now we got to state prison that's why you chose that's why you chose Nebraska then that's, we were an hour away from St. Louis the, he clo- said, the closest city was an hour away that's like legit not 
Let's put it like this. I, I'm sorry, I'll say this. I'd rather choose Arizona than that. Like, I, 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 I didn't work. Down. Yeah. That's R and B. That's R and B's right there on the right, bro. You were hey, you were right. That's I would not survive that. Yeah, no, nah, dude. I would not survive. That's crazy. No. Oh yeah, wait, what is the pop? I work too damn hard to live seven? like that. We're growing. Look at that. And hey, look at the population seven. of Cave Creek real quick. Hey, we grow. jumped. That's probably when the state prison came. You see that little increase? Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh, damn. We went down. Yeah, but you're basically Scottsdale. Yeah, it's a good location. Hey, you're, yeah, you have the small town. You get, you get to say 5,000, but you guys are, you guys are yeah, right There's there a lot of people around. Yeah. Couldn't imagine playing high school football for you, too. Like, you guys had to always practice either at night, right? Oh, we Did went to the to... state. No, not at Cave Creek. We would practice at 2 p.m. You, you, they, that would be brutal. That was even allowed? Was brutal. Yeah, that was allowed. Like in Arizona, September. like, there was like, yo, you cannot even. The nice school shit. I went to, the well, Cape, uh, Cat Show's a nice school. The football programs are definitely different. Chaparral's football program. I know. Oh, yeah. Nighttime, nighttime yeah, practices. Yeah, we would literally yeah, go up north for camp and stuff like that. They have, they have more money, obviously. Yeah. But, um, dude, kind of like that, though. Whole, we went to state my sophomore year. Whole town shut down. Little signs up there. Gone to state. Like, it was, it's fucking awesome. Hey, do you like the, uh. The Instagram photo I sent that Prince of Mukamara, he's from Arizona, and of how Scottsdale and Phoenix is, the area, how they. Oh, that shit was funny. Drew all the lines yeah. and said what was there. Yeah. I was looking if the Cape Creek was in there, but it wasn't. I know. It's kind of like Northern. I just missed yeah. it. But yeah, dude, uh, Arizona rips. And I fucking mess with the, I mess with the dirt. I know that is more of an acquired taste. So I can definitely understand why you guys don't like the. But there's a lot of positives. Part. There's a lot I'd of I'd love to hear some out of your mouth because you've been kind of coming hard and I'm trying I to get you to move the there in the wintertime. I'm trying to get Will to live in Arizona in the wintertime. Florida's nice to live in a good spot with Florida. A lot of good shit yeah. to have. Winter, winter, winter and it's a hell of a lot closer. Yeah, and, you, and there's more green. Yeah, because it, yeah, more, it rains. It's not close to Cabo. Or Vegas. Key West. Cabo. Or Yo, Vegas. I fuck with Key West. Big time. Can we move to Key West? Yes, we can. Oh, bro. We would not get one guest. That's fine. We don't need them. <laughs> Dude. We have the West. Key West, Florida <laughs> is all fucking time. We have the West. You been to Key West? I don't think I have. Dude, I, I'm, I'm not awesome. a big Florida. I mean, I lived in California. The, so island, like, the islands are what? Four miles long? Yeah, tiny. It's tiny, dude. Like, there's an airstrip and then the rest, it's like literally cut in half. There's the airport and then the rest of the town. I haven't had great experiences in Florida overall. I've been there maybe like four or five times. Again, I haven't been to Key yeah. West, but the times I went, I'm like, yeah, no, I definitely can check this off the place I ever want to live. See, I, thought the, I, thought, I thought the same thing. I the, the same no, the thing. humidity there was the worst I've ever experienced. I remember like coming out of my like, glass Florida? just to immediately fog up. I'm immediately walk outside. Like, I'm a. What, I what like month did you clean. go? I, I guess. It sounds like middle I of summer. Guess, like, like, spring Arizona. break, spring break, summer. Like, I, I just. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, Dave just doesn't know how to travel. Walk out of sunglasses, get fogged up. I mean, like. Go to Arizona in June. We'll see what that's like. Fuck it. Yeah. No, I remember going also out to Florida too, and it was for my brother in law's bachelor party. And it was like overcast the entire time. I even went to the okay, so I remember being in Florida for the Pro Bowl. That's when we, we met for the first time. Mm -hmm. It was overcast the entire time. I'm like, what? Like, I, I never. It is bullshit. They call the Sunshine State. It just fucking rain. It, it was raining. I'm like, this is fucking shit weather. Like, what? The what's fuck there, is this? What's Arizona? Hey, I'm called? with you. Uh, I was like, Grand Canyon State. Grand Canyon. I'm uh, I'm with you on like Florida. But you get down those keys, brother. I, again, I've that's never a, been. I, I, can't, a, I can't speak on it because I've never been. We're talking done. tropical vibes. It's like everyone's a little more chill. There's like chickens running around and stuff like that. It's cool. It's a cool fucking setup. Here's another thing. Again, what? I, I may. I may. You seem like a negative guy. No. I mean, <laughs> you kind of seem negative I, right I, now. I, I know what I like. And I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll pose this. Like, I'm not a sand, sand guy. You're a lake guy over beach. Oh, fucking 10 out of 10. Right. Ooh, like, hey JP, hey, we got a conversation. I can't, I can't lake I can't guy, stand lake sand. guy over beach. I, I, I'd oh, I, can't stand give me, sand give me, now. Give me a lake over beach. Like, first of all, I can never live in a uh, beach town because it's too sleepy for me. Like, that's exactly the shot I needed you to take too. Like, hey, that, that, that's the first thing. That's what I'm saying. Like, even throw in San Diego. Like, do I do I think it's nice? Do I like to go visit all that stuff? Could I actually like live there? Who are you hanging out with? Hang on now. Let Bro, the man hey, talk. Dave had a tough upbringing. <laughs> let the man talk. <laughs> like, 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 like overall, like I just, I just don't, I don't, My I don't really city. appreciate like. Uh, I, I just don't. I don't. I don't like beach town. I don't like the. I, I will visit a beach town vibe. Like I, you can give me a beach two weeks out of the year for like a spring break for the kids. But other than that, I, if you didn't ever, if I never saw sand, I would be. Totally cool. That sand gets ever gets in your fucking crack, gets in places you don't want to be. I'm assuming with kids, it's gonna be a fucking nightmare to fucking get it out. It gets in your car. If it's in my bed, that's what throws me. The bed the part, I can that's get. What I'm I can get on board with the bed, bro. 
Bro, that, just wait till your you. kids get older because they'll come and lay in bed with you. Oh, that fucking they night. put the crumbs everywhere mm. and you go to bed at night. And for whatever reason, your wife's side, perfectly fucking clean. Mm. And you got all them damn crumbs if in there, bro. I feel like any little bit of like sand, like just that little thing. I'm, 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 I'm changing. Sorry. I'm changing like my, my sheets. I don't give a shit. Like that shit. I all can't to that. say you love the lake vibe the I'll most. I'll take a lake vibe better. Like being on a boat with the guys oh, drinking a beer. The like clip chilling, I needed. I, I, I'd take that. Do you believe that there's such thing as a boat wave? Yes, 100%. Just like there's a Jeep wave that is out here that I realized that with the only Wranglers... This is the worst podcast we've ever done. I fucking <laughs> love it. Yeah, man, I love, I love this podcast. It. It, 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 dude, yes. Oh, my God. I was driving someone through it. I mean, I'm like, I don't know that there fucking person. There is definitely person. a Jeep wave. I, I've been on a, I was but on a boat all only last Wranglers. Summer. It's there's only Wranglers. Oh, there's a boat okay. wave. There is a boat wave. No, boat you, wave. it's just like in golf. Like, you know, you pass someone and like you have that awkward thing where you're not really going very fast and you're kind of yeah, about yeah, to pass them. You just like, hey, I'm having a good day. You're having a good day. you a golf guy? I'm trying. I'm bad, but I'm I'm. Let's go. I'm trying to turn the boy. We well, just it's gonna got, be a collective. We're trying to get this busting, busting golf. Club. We just started some merch with a uh, golf club, busting golf club, mm. and it looks really good. It seems like something I would want to put on, but I'm not about the clubs. He's well, not, but I think we just well, gotta get out there dude, for the vibes. You, you, don't, you don't have to be like a club guy, like a, a country club guy. To I, just I, I, I'm very against country clubs. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't. I'm again. I'm not gonna like say like I don't like country clubs but i also will yeah, say like, you're a part you're, of richland you're i'm trying to i'm, I'm not <laughs> yes, i'm not i'm not gonna be i'm not gonna be the dude that's gonna be like going out there every time john it up like that's where i'm gonna spend my days like that's not that's bro not the me. only reason to be a part of a country club is to be over there on a consistent basis i want to golf at a good place that i know i can get a fucking time that's six minutes from my house that's why and apparently they have good you know some brunches on weekends every yeah, now they have they have brunches they have good weight room spas they have spas they, they have a nice setup they in there. also have Ooh, I think a I daycare a so when you have dad time you get the kids you can bring them there and your the wife doesn't know what miss you may now you can give it to them and let the ki- them watch the kids while you go play 18 right some drinks with the guys and then pick and up it's a real boy club in there too Here's where I'm is, against. Is Richard? Here's, is here's Richard the number where Ben Jones is? Here's the Come on, I've been very no, negative. I just I have one question. One question before you get into it. Is that is Richard the one Ben Jones is in? Ben Jones is there. Uh, suck okay, up so there. when we were on the that. Vegas trip, Ben was selling me on it, and I was like, hey, this Richland place seems kind of Richland, nice. Richland's a vibe. I've been to Richland a few times. I uh, yeah. did a pool it, day with the kids s- there and stuff like that, and they got good-ass food, too. I was shocked with that. Yes. Uh, most country clubs, I'm like, I'm paying to, like, top dollar, and I got this shit food. They got it actually a, wasn't bad. They got a room down in the basement, dimly lit. Guys smoke cigars in there. Talk shop. Tell oh. war stories. I have, I've been there, I've been there a while. I was there for uh, Rally on the Runway so a couple we'll times. we'll get him off that hill. I was, Easy. I was, Rally on the Runway is like a, it was a charity event that I went there for and I've been there a couple times like Ford Tomlin and them. Because yeah. they're, they're members. Not yet, but I do want to, um, here's I'm looking into this it. This is what you need to do. Yeah. Looking Just into it. Be a country club with a couple of your buddies and then, at least for me, like, I don't, do I need to socialize with everyone? I could get it, like, cool, I meet someone and I become friends with them, great, but I'm not like joining it. Like, I look at country club is basically like, Joining a fr- yeah, I'm like you. You pay for your friends. Let's let's call a spade a spade. Thank you. And, that's a and, phrase I use all the oh, time. I love screaming at chicks and yelling at them when they're doing the whole thing. Oh, I get, that's a college story. I love that. But like you just yell at them. Like, you pay for your friends. Yeah, they're standing there doing the whole chant. Oh yeah, no. But well, like yelling at chance. women. Yeah. No, but you you get like you get a couple of your buddies. You join the same country club and you golf all the time. It's like hey, we're gonna meet. Like I don't care to play with like random people. I will, but like I just want to play with like my buddies. That yeah. way, like I I, I don't. I don't know. I, like I said, I have enough friends. I don't. If I meet more, great. But like, I'm good. I want to play with people like I enjoy being around, not like f- being forced. Yeah. Here's my negatives on country club. Richland, let's go, boys. I think Richland rips. I think it's a cool ass spot. I've been there a few times. It's fun. However, country <laughs> clubs to me are very pretentious. I feel like they think they're better than you, and I cannot stand having to. You can and can't wear certain article articles of clothing. That bugs the fuck out of me. If I can't just show up and gym shorts and a t-shirt it's like what are we trying to prove here boys can we just fucking hang out because at the end of the day a lot of people at country clubs are doing degenerate shit anyway can, can drinking i drinking a bunch smoking a bunch on the course acting crazy can i can i tell you your answer then go ahead you're a discovery property guy Have you ever heard of that yeah troubadour i know no shoes doesn't matter I dress code. Shoes. it's the epitome of boys i ain't gonna lie you're gonna be spending a lot of money but like the comfort stations are uh, have you ever been to any of them no, I okay, haven't. Go go to one because whatever I say, it's not even going to do it justice. Their conversations blow anything I've ever had out of the water. And like, there's legit coolers at every single tee box you pull up to. Mm. Shot. Like, what is this called again? It's called the Discovery Property. You know, like, Troubadour. The, the Troubadour. Troubadour. I've heard it. The, the one Ernest, that Ernest talked about it in the podcast once. That's the one Chase Rice and, and yep. oh, okay. James. They're all out there. Like, Chase is out yeah. there. It's literally like, it's kind of like, a, what's that fucking spot that opened up? 
that's like more of an artsy, more of country club. Country club. It's, it's like degenerate. Like you want to be a de- like your epitome of like the boys degenerate golf with no, like no rules. Like it's discovery you know about that. That's literally you wear a t-shirt tank top. Yeah. Dude, it's fucking, you can golf w- without your fucking shoe. Like you just do whatever you want. And the food there is unreal. I've been to like, I think two or three of their there's properties. There's one in San now. Diego as well, right? There's, there's, there's one in San Diego. They just bought one in Tahoe. There's uh, a couple in Mexico. They're doing one in Cabo right now. Uh, yeah. And like, I know wit witness, uh, he had bought one down, uh, down there. In Cal- I forget which one, uh, but it's dude, like you, it's unreal. Again, you're paying an arm and a leg too. Yeah. But it's it's fucking. But like it, really it's nice. worth it if you're saying like that's exactly what you need. Well, it's the same like, vibes really I have with golf too. Like I feel like golf. I've the same phrase I use all the time is like it's for people that have made it. And to me, it's like that's so much time to spend on other things I could be doing other than that. Like I have a hard, I have a really hard time doing as much as I do with this bus and like balancing family life, family and work life because there's so many things I want to like accomplish. Mm-hmm. And there's other things I have that I want to do too, like. I love aviation. I want to learn to fly. I want to. I want to do that. And like, how would I pick? Really, fuck. One of the one of those yeah. two. I want to do fun shit. And so golfing to me is like, I'm just never really been about golf. Have I golfed before? Yes. Is it fun times? Yeah. But like, it's not one of those things. I'm like, I gotta make sure and get back here this week. Or just yeah, just buy buy sim buy a simulator. Yeah. But dude, I'm trying to think of um. And you I have made it, bro. Uh, you, you're, so you, whole house. you sound like a simulator guy. Just buy a simulator. They're awesome. Like, I think the ones I just used one recently. Again, yeah. I'm not a big golfer. I'm learning, but like this guy had a really like my neighbor has a really nice one. I used it. I'm like, oh, this is like pretty much everything felt exactly like golf, except obviously the putting's a little different. And you can get be a high 80s, 90s golfer just doing that. And then you can sp- and that's ways you can choose whenever, whenever. Like and I don't have a problem like like going back to the country club thing. I don't have a problem like paying for stuff. Like discovery sick. The Soho House setup, that seems dope, too. I've been there a few times. It's awesome. It's just, it was when the country club comes into play. And, like, I mean, you look at the stuff, like, you see Caddyshack. Like, you grew up on a movie like Caddyshack. You're like, I don't want to be, like, those. There's not one people. thing you're saying about a country club that I disagree with. Because I have those same problems, too. Just like I have a problem with living in gated communities. Dude, yes. That's, that, again, it, it's a stigma. It's just a weird thing that I have a hard time. Like, gated home? It. Awesome. Yeah, I, and there's a total difference. Community? There's a total fucking the difference. Fuck out of here, there's a total dude. fucking yes. difference. Thank you. Okay, I'm safety. glad. Man, fuck your safety, dude. Yeah. I am not about to get yeah. into yeah. community. Yeah. Thank you. But I, I, again, I don't think what you're saying, and I don't disagree at all with that country thing. It's just something I think I've like, you know, eyes well. I think it's good for the long run. Good for like, you know, there's things like Frankie. I don't have to build a tennis court. Like Frankie can have her own tennis court. There's a lot more things that I can get. I just don't think I'm going to be like, you can look around the whole, I think I look past the whole like, stigma of a country club because there's a lot of other amenities you can get from it that's mm-hmm. why overall i'm like all right like i can get behind it yeah it's so many just i think the stigma of country clubs is going to be on the way out because what i where i agree with you is that stigma is those dudes are old as fuck now yeah and they're not going to be there forever they're just gonna die yeah so it's like it's new way new that... people that live in nashville are going to be those people that you're talking about that are at a richland or at a troubadour honestly richland's already starting to a little more like that like they're I, the way know Mark Mariani at Richland. Oh, yeah, everyone knows Mark Mariani. Yeah, okay, so I, I went and golf with him. I knew him from like way back in the day, and he, uh, like, he's the one who first brought me there to golf. And he like pulled up, like honking, like has a bunch of drinks, screaming. There's this old ass dude hitting, and like I'm like trying to be proper. Like I, I understand how country clubs are, and I don't know what this vibes like. And the old guy turns and he goes, "About to have a good day out there, aren't you, kid?" Yeah. Yep, that's mine. All right, see you later. Like, sorry, yeah. dude. Like, you probably yeah. pissed me. He's like, "Oh no, this ain't this vibe." Like, we're just having. I'm like. It kind of like still worries me because I've heard that like you had to wear a collared shirt, tucked in. I'm like, fuck this, fuck that. Yeah, fuck, like I'm not. I don't co-sign to that. You know, tuck after the first hole. That's why I, I, <sighs> I, I, I yeah. I, but I still agree. It's I do appreciate a nice tuck, you're, but you're not if I tuck, have to. You're about oh, we to be got, a tucked oh, yeah, We're running guy. out of time. We're running out of time. Yeah, you're about to be a cowboy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shit, dude. This has been yeah, a, this has been an amazing two hours. Boys, households, anybody that has a dog, listen up. Dogs will eat anything, shoes, toilet paper, garbage, even kibble. Hell, my freaking English bulldog threw up the other day and then fucking ate the throw up. But just because they'll eat it doesn't mean it's healthy food. Here's an idea. What if dogs ate real food? Real food for real dogs. Feed your dog the farmer's dog. It's fresh, real, healthy food with whole meat and veggies, gently cooked in human-grade kitchens to preserve their nutritional value. Waffle. I've got to shout out specifically my English Bulldog Waffle. She was once 66 pounds, 
overweight, heavy, dry patches on her back. This is back in 2019, boys. She was a young pup. We took her to a vet. They're like, hey, she's got to lose weight. She's got to lose weight. They would recommend stuff left and right. She would never, every time we took her back, she would still be in the 60s. Until we came across, organically, the farmer's dog, who is now a sponsor of the boys, which... We need to get on this code going on because I feel like I've been doing God's work for them for the last few weeks, but they've been serving waffle for the last few years, boys. And I'm not shitting you. She went from in the sixties to she is now a trim, slim, highly energetic dog at 44 pounds. She runs all day long in the backyard and I'm not shitting you. You bring her inside. You have to make her drink water because you know, English bulldogs, they got the short snouts. They can't breathe. Get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash bus. And plus, you get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com, thefarmersdog.com slash bus to get 50% off and free shipping. That's thefarmersdog.com slash bus Guys, I cannot recommend the farmer's dog enough. Um, eat farmer's dog, save your dog's life, or get them slim, trim, and energetic. Back to the episode. Our tear talk this week is going to be Nickelodeon cartoon characters. Mm. Go ahead, JP. Start us off, brother. All right. My tier three, arguably one of the coolest Nickelodeon characters out there, and that is Auto Rocket. Oh, yes, sir. Shout out to boy Auto Rocket. Auto man. is dope. Tier two, one of my, obviously one of my other favorite cartoon characters. And oh, it's cartoon just, characters? Yeah, it's on the show. Yeah. Oh, I thought we were doing shows. Thank yeah. God. I'm glad you. Oh, yeah. Glad, yeah. Tier two goes to Ultra Lord Sheen from Jimmy Neutron. Sheen wow. still provides value to my life to this day. <laughs> and he honestly gets even better. And Sheen is a gift that keeps on giving. And tier one, SpongeBob. You can't beat SpongeBob. SpongeBob embodies everything that we should all like want to be positive attitude, hard worker, never complaining, and just trying to build community with those closest to him. There's nothing but optimism. With yeah. Bob, man. So those are, that's my, my list. Yeah. With that, I don't want to give it to him, but yeah. One word, Jack to describe solid studs. Sick. What's your word to describe it, Dave? His list? Yeah. Solid. I mean, I guess someone already took that. So. Incredible. Incredible. Outstanding. Do you want us to go before you? I'll go. You want to go? Uh, I'm ready. All right, go ahead. Go ahead, Willie. My... Oh, my honorable mention, and this was probably my first show that I fell in love with as a young little wolf pup, um, Rocco from Rocco's Modern Life. I loved Rocco, his homie Heifer, Spunky, his dog. I loved the frog, the frog uh, neighbors, his boss and the wife. Dude, I loved Rocco's Modern Life, but shout out to boy Rocco. That's my honorable mention. My tier three is going to be uh, cat dog loved cat dog growing up. I, I love cat dog so much. Like when they were trying to make products like food products outside of the one where, uh, um, uh, cat is getting dog buff as shit to compete. He's just like on basically like roided out. That was a great episode, but the, the episode where they're like making a product it like my young dumb self, I try like making like, you know, jelly sugar, putting stuff on to like, I'm trying to like create things in the kitchen. But my tier three, cat dog. My tier two, a little unorthodox, but he was one of my favorite characters. Probably my favorite person to enjoy coming into a scene. Mm. Um, and it's Twister Rodriguez from Rocket Power. Just an incredible best friend of Auto Rocket. Was funny. He's, you know, kind of dumb. But Twister, he always had a good head on his shoulders. And he hated being called Maurice by his older brother. But shout out the boy Twister. I love Twister. And by the way, a little side shout out. He didn't make the list at all, but you got to give a shout out to uh to Tito. And he'd always drop oh, wisdom. Oh, that's a he'd good always one. drop wisdom on those boys. He always loved Tito. And then the only other time, only other state of mind he'd be in is sadness. And then they all throw some surprise party to lift his spirits. But Tito was a stud in there as well. My tier one is going to be probably 
without fully having probably 30 minutes to digest all of this, but my favorite show in the 90s, and it was Hey Arnold. But my tier one's going to go to Arnold. I felt like in every really? in every episode, there was a lesson to be had, and uh, Arnold was the best. I felt like just the show overall, they had the right characters and everything else. The whole woogity, 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 the boy Arnold, football head. Shout out the boy. I think he deserves his flowers for tier one. Seems like uh, Hey Arnold embodies exactly what J.C. Treader embodies. <laughs> <laughs> like he was always like, yeah. He'd pick up the money and give it to you. Yeah. He was always That's doing the right thing. Ask him, was he a hair on fan? Yeah, yeah. Was he, he a fan of Arnold. He's based his entire life yeah. off of it. Arnold yeah. Twister, Cat Dog, Rocco. Cool. Yeah. Old head. Fair. My nineties baby. Bear. Solid. Theme songs. Oh, yeah. Those are my favorite ones. Yeah, you got the word, David? I think I have a word. Um, I got it. I got one. I got yeah, one. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> fuck. Fuck. Nostalgia. Mm. Taylor, you want to go? David? The little boy does have to leave here soon. Yeah. No, we definitely got to get this thing going. I got to get the fuck out. You want me to go? Yeah, if you got to go. Honorable mention is going to, to go like uh, from one individual character, obviously, because they're all individual characters of the Angry Beavers. And that is dude, you're so, God, Tree damn. Flower, dude. The cool, calm, collected. There was, I mean, it was Angry Beavers, but really he was always kind of the voice of reason. If things got a little out of hand, he's like, hey, man, it's all good. Don't worry about it. He was always dealing with the other guy. Get a little too fucking wild. My tier three is going to go to Tommy Pickles. Tommy Pickles was a leader. He was a risk taker. He always got everybody dialed in. And when Angelica would come around, he would just let her do her thing. He Every once in a while, I'd get a little upset, but he would always figure out a way to make the best out of a tough situation, especially getting out of that damn pen to help everybody out. Yeah. Uh, my tier two is going to go to Patrick Starr. Seems like the ultimate, ultimate side character, in my opinion. His comedic relief to some real problems they had out there. He had some... He had some moments, dude, when he was trying to blow a bubble at, at, at uh, SpongeBob's bubble stand. Literally put me in tears as a child. I thought it was so funny. Hilarious, dumb, but hilarious. And always was there ready to ride with the boys. And my tier one is going to have to go to Twister Rodriguez. Oh, he wow. was... Mm. I, I loved watching Rocket Power. I, it's, my, it's my favorite probably cartoon of all time. And um, seeing Otto Rocket out there, I thought I loved Otto, but I thought he took things a little too serious. And the only thing, like you said, with being called Maurice, he would have a hard time um, with that. But other than that, man, always like kind of cool doing his thing. Never really wanted to be like the best like Otto did. He was really just like embodied chill boy vibes. And I got to give a big shout out to him. I, I was a huge fan of him. And that is my tears talk. Surprising. Well rounded. Solid. <laughs> Good. Classics. Deep. Twister's number one. What was surprising? Deep. Twister took me by surprise. Okay. I love Twister, man. Twister took me by surprise. Oh, so cool, dude. The yeah. one the one I really upset I did not hit was Tommy Pickles. Tommy Pickles, low key, is a competitor for tier one. Yeah. I think Tommy Pickles, really you like grow that. up with Tommy Pickles. Should have done like where she creates top second. Patrick Stars is the word. Ah, yeah. Oh, side it, characters. I know. I feel like each time we get a little bit better, we're going to dial it in one, one of these Make days. Make sure somebody writes that down because that's a good one. I know, bro. Because we do need to do just Nickelodeon shows, but I, I agree. Secondary characters. No question, because that's uh, you know Twister's up there, but yeah, I'm I'm upset I didn't hit uh, Tommy Pickles, and then Angry Beavers was surprising me. I think that's a phenomenal show, but I was surprised you. Yeah, I don't know why. Um, when we first started doing this, I thought like, man, Angry Beavers really was. I, when I looked up all the shows, like I really enjoyed Rocco's Modern Life, but for some reason, I get so fired up when Angry Beavers came on. Yeah, I just thought it was such a a fun. Show. I fucking loved it. That's when you said, it. "I'm like, well, I fuck, I don't want to use that one now." No, like, you that, can use, that was, you can use that was the same one. You, you uh, I, don't, I don't even know their name, like the names, but like I, I had to look up Tree Flower. Yeah, I was like, "What are Angry what are their Beavers?" Names? It was yeah. fucking solid, but yeah, yeah I, th I think I think I got my 
We're ready when you are. Okay, so my tier three is going to be... Oh, man. Two and three are tough. I think I'm going to go... Let's see. I think I'm going to go with Squidward. He's the antagonist yes. to SpongeBob, and you need someone to shit on. And you needed like that negative energy to balance out like the positive because life's not all like flowers. And I, I just enjoyed just like the fact that he just came in, did like, you know, then he was just the opposite of everything that, you know, Patrick and, Squ and uh, SpongeBob are about. So I liked, I liked his balance to the show. I thought that like, if you don't have him, it's too, uh, well, I could get totally, uh, called for this one, but it's like too Ted Lasso for me where it's like too positive. Um, oh, hang on now. Yeah. Well, he, yeah. you know, it's, 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 it's his I, time. Yeah. It's his time. Um, tier two then goes to Cosmo from Fairly Odd Parents, mainly be because I fucking love the show and I watch it all the time. But Cosmo was the epitome of just always would fuck up. And I, I just enjoy like off the cuff stuff. I enjoy like, then gotta be perfect. Kind of liked how he always kind of threw things around. I'm not looking for a message that need like a, 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 you know, a positive thing for me at the end of the day. Um, and then number one, a tier one, this is going to be very controversial. Reptar. Reptar. So here's, here's my reason. Rep <laughs> Reptar <laughs> from Rugrats. Yeah. He was not a main character, but he wasn't even a secondary or third. Well, well you got, you got to let him. Re listen, Re Reptar what? was Order, the yeah. whole thing about like Rugrats that they were trying to do. And the most important thing to them was Reptar. And for me, like growing up, like I wanted, like, that's why I love dinosaurs. Like the idea of like Godzilla, loving dinosaurs, Jurassic Godzilla, Will. and like always going Sorry, after like, like the animal reptile. For me, I'm like, that for me, like kind of was always something I went back to as like a child, like your stuffed animal. Like he was like my animated stuffed animal. So that's for me, like when there was a sh anytime Rugrats had Reptar in it, that was a good episode for me. Weak. <laughs> <laughs> Lost me. Honest. Mm, thank you. Controversial. <laughs> solid thing out of it. Yeah, yeah, Come on, JP. Give, give your own rating. Oh. Solid yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> almost. Almost. Mm. Uh, let's start there, Mitchie. Almost why? I The Reptar one. The Reptar yeah. one yeah. lost me. I, the first two were like three and two were really good. And See, then, for me, I was looking. I'm like, I don't need, like, I never was a main character guy and then i Same. i kept looking at like for me i fucking loved rugrats but like reptar was that was like the mission was reptar i was a big yeah i was getting down like doing that stuff like i just like reptar i'm like damn rugrats was so fucking good like, and like i feel like spongebob no offense like that's the easy one to always like lean on yeah and like he kind of kept on through like after my childhood so i'm not gonna own it whereas like rugrats was legit when i was a kid like that's when it was there it was profound you um well, when I said lost me, you as soon as you made that Ted Lasso remark, I, I had a I hard knew, time I, honestly, engaging back I'm, in with you. I again, I'm I'm, I'm, shows I'm, on television I, right I, now. I agree. I'm watching right now. But you but just it's it is again. No, I I I watch shitty shows. I'm not going to say I'm not. This? I'm also not saying Ted is a shitty show. Oh my god! I'm saying Mark this. Squidward. Ted, he, they he have Ted Lasso. They no, have No, different. Ted Lasso. Different. Ted. I think Ted Lasso. I really enjoyed season one, and then I think like it's it's fine. But like everyone's like, it's the greatest show. This is amazing. I'm like, dude, it, it's it's fine. I get the guy's overly positive. There's great messages. Like always be authentically yourself. Like I, I see it all, but I'm like, is it like, does it get me going? Does it get me tweeting? Like, this is the greatest show. I can't believe like how everyone else is like dick riding Ted Lasso. No, like I and I have no problem full on a mini and it's not pessimistic because I'm not so not saying the show is bad. I appreciate the show. I watch the show. I like the show. But when I see everyone basically, you know, like, Slurping up dick, I'm like that. That show ain't it. That it ain't what everyone else is saying how, how it is. Dave is a fucking great show. That's a, I, again. Ted Lasso is. I'm not saying like, is it funny? Is it a good show? All those it checks all those boxes, but it's not like. It's like again, you is it? Can it make the list of something like a like a tier like a tier talk? It can make a tier talk list. Is it my tier one? No, it it can't be because it hasn't gotten there at all through three seasons. God forbid people love a show so much it's moved them to want to tweet about it. Saying, I, I just don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, actually, I, actually I just don't think, just I just don't think it's too. it. Have you watched the show Shorzy? Oh, yeah. 
What do you think about Shorzy? Fucking phenomenal. Thank you. Hey, I mean, you mind taking your hat off? Yeah, what? <laughs> Look at a baby angry yeah. beaver. If you had a bigger nose, it would definitely fit. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, yeah no, no, Shorzy's fucking phenomenal. Uh, what, what's what's the other one? Uh, Letter Kenny. Letter is phenomenal too. Yeah, yeah okay. I think Shorzy is the single greatest one season show I've ever seen. I love it that much. Yeah, I don't need you to. I don't need you to co-sign that. that no, I, I, I I, again, I don't like that. I could jump more on board with that than like Ted Lasso's like a top three best show. Out I'm there. trying to get Will into just to watch, dude. It's just I want to. I'm not. I'm not against watching it. It's on like unreal. It's very loud. It's like constant talking. There's zero dead space. Super witty too. Like Super and, witty. and like and then the banter and then also throwing like I'm not even fucking Canadian, but like I, you can get on like what the idea of how like Nate Canadians trying to talk because I've also seen Letter Kenny, so I see like. It's just like, it's crafty. Like, I appreciate wit. If there's good wit in a show, you're probably going to grab my attention. If it's just like, okay, I always like to feel good. Okay, I get it. Like, hey, and then you get this. I'm going back to Ted. Like, then you get the depression there's side. Good wit and like, in, there's good wit in Ted Lasso. There's, there's like a lot again, of good writing. I just don't think there's enough wit to make there's me. a much different level. Of wit. Yeah. And, and like, it's, it's also. It is an A level show. There's a, a lot of softballs in there. Like, it's an A level show. I think it's a, I think it meets more. I, you could say. E, you could say C plus. I'd be like, yeah, I could probably throw it in that that category. Touche a, for you. If you throw an A right now, like what you're doing. What, what? You said C plus. <laughs> That's a good show. You're you're like you're almost eighty plus. Is not a good show. C plus is seventy nine. Or seventy eight. Uh, se or seventy seven. Seventy nine. Seventy nine. A C plus is good for movies, not a TV show. If you're not on IMDb and you're not pushing eight plus, like I'm not really gonna fuck with you a whole lot. Big ratings guy with Will. Yeah. But you know, like, it's like if it's a horror film, you know where to bring the rating down. Like, if it's in the high 50s, 60s, like, you're looking at a decent horror film. Yeah, because it's, it's such a... Uh, like, in, it's, it's, in, it's mo a niche. in niche. movies, Upper Sevens works. It's a, that's a, probably a very good... That's probably a good movie. Why, why wouldn't that work for TV shows? There's, because there's TV probably, shows there's probably four X TV, shows, TV shows, shows, so you really got to, like, nitty-gritty like them. I, I, I don't know. I just, because you know, TV shows, you're going to be spending a lot of time... Be in best TV show, go. Game of Thrones, Breaking Bad... Yeah, Sons of Anarchy. I don't hear Ted Lasso. Boom. No, no, yeah, Ted Lasso's oh, up there. Oh, oh, oh. Boom. I, on, I mean, all, I, all I said was this. Yeah, did thank he you. Just do that? No, no, he didn't. I said Ted Lasso's an A. <laughs> he I said down. I said Ted Lasso's an A level show. Ted, Ted Lasso's a nine plus show. It's one o'clock. You've won the you've won the matter. war. Ted Lasso's a uh, nine plus level show. It's a well written show, and it's one of the best shows out right now currently. Yeah, but that also could also mean that the my, the types of shows that are out right now aren't very good. Good, yeah. Have you seen Shrinking? Relative. Shrinking with the, I haven't. I've heard that's really good. I'm a good show. You like might that. not like it though, because it's written by the Ted Lasso people. I, I know. I don't have anything against the Ted Lasso people. I don't have any. Again, I'm not like a like oh yeah. A realist, a high school like, college or a high school football coach goes over and coaches a club soccer. It does seem a little more realistic. I, I again. I, mean, I, out, I think. I think it's good. Sorry, I'm, I'm, hey, sorry, I'm, oh, hey, I'm, I'm projecting right now. Okay, what's your favorite TV show? Jack, I'm fucking with you. I'm, I'm joking around. Just standpoint, Scrubs. Oh, There's anger flowing around in this bus. I fucking, I messed with Scrubs. That was probably my number one all time. But I feel like from recency bias, I don't know. I haven't really watched a whole lot of shows. You nip, nip tuck kind of guy? You watch that? No. Like a bunch of stacks. Narcos. Narcos was good. Oh, I was a big Entourage guy. Entourage, that's phenomenal. Yeah, again, Entourage. like that's that that's a phenomenal one. Like I would definitely like those ones. I I could def, if I took the time actually looked at the list I can easily put ten to fifteen shows before Ted Lasso, and that's that's not me trying to shit on them. That's just like no truly well, being honest. I think there's ten to fifteen shows that have happened or happening that are better. I don't disagree with that. I think if there's ten to fifteen and those are your north of C plus, then you need to get a little bit more well versed in TV. Yeah, but I think there's a plenty of C pluses. Like again. There's a lot there's, of there's, there's a lot C, of C plus students. C, how, how many C plus students we got in here? There's there, a there's plenty C, of us. There's so they, C pluses oh, in your top fifteen. Yeah, you got you guys are eight, straight A's. Hell no. Not everybody's an A plus student. Yeah. Don't lie to yourself. You got C plus, plus people, in your top fifteen. Do I have a C plus in my top fifteen. No. Yeah, look, I don't disagree <laughs> that there's ten or fifteen better than Ted Lasso. I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's one of the better shows out on TV mm -hmm. right now. It's a very good show. I'm trying to think of another good show that I loved. But I don't know if I can put 15 shows ahead of Ted Lasso. I, I wouldn't know unless I'm not I willing to die on the hill. Like really. Lost? No. I think Lost was so good, though it didn't give me what you needed as it got towards the tail end. They feel like they started stretching it out too far. 
Seems like Yellowstone's that way. Yeah. Okay. So same, same. I would, I would definitely parallel them. Totally different shows, but you parallel them. Those definitely were better because it, like, if I didn't, I just started watching Ted Lasso. Mm -hmm. That shows you, like, I was willing to wait a pretty long time before, like, oh, the moment it came out. And that's, again, that's my personal, like, view on it. It just, like, I didn't have, I didn't feel a necessity, like, oh, moment it comes out, I need to watch it. Whereas I remember Lost, I remember, like, Yellowstone, I binged the fuck out of Yellowstone. Yeah, Yellowstone's fire. And that, like, again, sometimes I'm just watching an hour of great views in Montana. Still, great fucking show. Like, the character development, phenomenal. Like Lost was amazing, and then I'm and then I got kind of weird, but still I'm like mm, overall great show. I probably wouldn't again. Breaking Bad was phenomenal. Took you on an unbelievable journey. Some filler episodes, pretty pretty pissed. Some for sure. But at the end, brought it home. Great, fucking gave you what you wanted. Yeah. Was Breaking Bad a show that came out and like the whole season comes out at once, or was week to week? When I watched it, it was all on Netflix. So you're popping those thirty minute episodes the entire time. Yeah, I mean, I my buddy. I don't know if you're watching it on it, and then, I, and then I binged it. There's a Game, Game of so good. Thrones. I probably watched the first three seasons like two or three times to bring other people in yeah. to start over again because it was that was good. Awesome. I didn't mind watching it, but it was so... I gotta get on Season that. eight was tough. Yeah, no, It was awesome. That show was Again, unreal. like the, the ending, like you're going to be like, damn, but like overall, you're not going to be I don't mad think he it. will if he watches it in succession. I think a lot of people who watch it all in just succession, like just binging it, I think a lot of people enjoyed season eight. You, you, are you, so you're saying to binge it or not to binge it? To binge it. I think I'm if a, he I'm watches big, it now, I'm a he'll, he'll wait guy because when you say filler, filler episodes, when you have filler episodes and you have to wait another week to see it, that's going to piss you off. So like, oh, that show sucked. But if you're binging that filler episode, you're like, this is great because I need to know. I know what happens now. There's like there's two years in, in the middle of season, like the ending of seven and eight. Friend. All, every, all of us just speculated every day. I mean, I remember I that. In there with I remember that yeah. every day look like, hey, here's a new theory. Here's a new theory. So then when the Hollywood theatrics of it, you know, was in eight. You're just so bummed because you had so many. Anyone seen Fleabag, by the way? Dude, that would be one. An off one. That's like a London European show. Mm -hmm. It fucking rips, dude. And it's it's a, uh, a it working budget. That's what I'm budget saying. Like, there, there's so many one spinoffs. I'm like, everyone, like, this is the. Did you watch Money Heist? It, it, it's almost like it forced it. Go watch Fleabag. It's a, it's a, like, a woman led, like, all about them, but, or, like, focus on them. But, like, and again, like, you can have some bias. Like, oh, like, they, it, that might not be like good. It fucking rips. It, it won, like, awards, and I totally agree. I'm like, finally, they're actually giving awards to good fucking shows, not just the one because. It's the most popular. Like, I feel like Ted Lasso is the most popular show. It's well, not the reason. best show. Well, it's the most popular because it's the most generic. Some, sometimes the, the most popular is generic. Like, I, I, well, we, we could use that. Yeah, I know. The way that, I'm, the way that show that. was developed, though, is a really cool story. You should look into that. Ted, I see. Yeah, again, I don't have it. You should look into that for sure. Because it's. Again, I'm not. Cool. Like, I hate. I'm bringing a little too much hate on it. It's You're just, saying a C, C plus, man. You're saying 7.9 is still Ted Lasso good. to you. That's still good. You're looking at Ted Lasso. We look it up. It'd probably be, I mean, Eight and a half is easy to go. I think over. the way you guys are looking at C pluses huh? are way different. Eight point eight. Yeah. I feel like that's a well, that's a very well positioned uh, number for Ted Lasso. Me, I like if I'm in there voting, I'm probably giving it like a nine one. But that's not an A. I know. It's an A. No, eighty eight. No, no, no. Yeah, an eight point eight. That's an eight eighty eight. Yeah, I mean, a a plus. Okay, so like again, it's not a C plus. I hey, you know what? Like for me, it's got like if you wanted to throw B plus, like I said, B to C plus, like. I can get with it, but like for my scale, I would probably pull it back. Have you seen Because once you throw season? that as an 88, there's going to be definitely better shows than that. And then you're going to have to like, well, this one's got to be 9 1. The next thing you know, it's like, well, how much space well, do I have? Well, all, all I'm saying is 88 is a, that's a good rated show. That's going to be one where if, if somebody brings up, Tara's like, hey, you should check out Ted Lasso. And I hadn't heard anything of it. I go to IMDb right away. If it's showing me 8.8 .8 for over 200,000 people that's voted on it, then I'm crushing it. You or Ted Lasso? Have you seen you on Netflix? Yeah, very I can, redundant. Man, I kind of died out. Have you seen? Have you seen the, you seen the last season? No, I, I okay. When they I, died out in the I second season, I was on season. the same fucking shit. I was like, if they do this shit again, I'm out. Really? And they fucking changed up the formula, which is scary. They put themselves on edge, but they fucking brought you back in. And I'm like, this is what I'm talking about. Because again, the formula works. Two seasons. Like, it's, don't, it's, don't get season. season. it's four it's now. Four. Okay, yeah, four yeah, now. yeah. I watched the first, the first two seasons and I'm like, bro, this is the same shit. The second one, the ending, I was like, this is this was kind of what are we corny, doing? I bro. think I watched maybe two episodes of the third season. I was like, I got it. I got it. better shit to do. Have you seen the last Kingdom? Watch, you watched the last one? No, I haven't. Oh, that's a good one. Hey, good. he has got to go. I, yeah. Hey, oh, yeah, you're so, right. You I just gotta go. I'm getting a call. I'm so fucked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, please subscribe. Rate five Love stars. Big hugs. Bro. Tiny kisses.